She doesn't have to make a wish because all of her wishes have become fulfilled in uh, getting Gurudev's uh, shiksha. You ready? Okay. Well, um, Hare Krishna, welcome everyone. Um, I guess this might be yet another historic event at this festival because this is, I believe, the first transcendental art exhibition uh, that the Sangha has uh, ever put on. I've been asked to introduce uh, Shamrani Didi and her discussion today on, on her paintings and what it's all about, so I'll just take a minute or two. Um, I've known Shamrani Didi for a long time. I think I remember meeting her in uh, 1971, something like that, in New York Temple. Uh, at the time, uh, she was painting, and uh, as I remember, one of the biggest Sankirtan devotees, uh, very famous for going out very boldly and preaching to everyone, and uh, coming back with lots of donations from people, having sold lots of books. I've known her in a way that right from day one she's been committed to Srila Prabhupada and to Srila Gurudev and she's dedicated her life to serving our, our Guru Varga and um, of course it's no secret that from the very early days she received personal instruction from Srila Prabhupada on how to paint beautiful transcendental pictures, pictures that Srila Prabhupada called windows to the spiritual world. Uh, a long time ago when she first began, um, she worked on the Krishna book paintings. And uh, when I joined the temple in Boston, I remember that the Boston temple was decorated with all these wonderful pictures of Krishna. Very, very simple, you could almost say at the time, almost naive if you understand the word naive art style. From those early days, her work has matured and deepened, uh, both in terms of her technical ability, but also, of course, in terms of her understanding of, of Siddhanta. And in all of her pieces, we see an amazing display of Krishna consciousness, uh, we're able to witness these sublime pastimes of Radha and Krishna, Krishna and Arjuna, all of the different pastimes of Krishna. I'm sure it's going to be a real treat for you to hear her comments on how she's painted them, the instructions that Srila Gurudev has given her in painting them. And I won't keep you any longer except to say that one of the reasons why she's making this presentation today is that at some time in the near future, all of these paintings are going to be made available to the devotee community to buy. Actually, buy is not really the right word because you can't really buy something like this. There isn't enough money to, to own one of these paintings asking ourselves the other day, well, how much are one of these paintings worth? Someone said $20,000, and somebody went, no way! <clears throat> they're worth way more than that. And someone said, well, yes, I think they're worth at least $300,000. <laughs> and of course, in a sense, they're worth an unbelievable amount of money, because if you go out into the, uh, the ordinary, fruitive world, you have artists that are making things that are just self-indulgent, abstract, mayavad, rooted pieces of art, and they're selling for millions of, millions of dollars. These pieces of, of art are more than pieces of art. They're actually deities. When Shamarani is painting these paintings, she's meditating deeply on these pastimes under Gurudev's instructions. <laughs> Isn't that true, or is that, are you going to tell me I'm wrong? It's, it's not true. Okay. Well, that's good for the PR. We want everybody to think that she's deep in meditation. I know better. I know better. I've been in room. I, 
I painted with Shamarani in L.A. years ago uh, during the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Marathon. Uh, what, what was it? Marathon. Marathon. I, I, factory came to mind, but it, it was kind of like a factory. We had many different artists all painting together, and uh, what came out of that was something that Shamarani calls production, what, production line paintings. But at any rate, I had the chance to sit by her and watch her and watch the dedication and, and the commitment. And, and I learned a lot about painting from her as well. So I've had a special mercy in that sense of having her association and, and in seeing how she goes about actually painting these things. So I know that we won't go into that. So we're going to make these paintings available to the devotee community, and you know we don't know uh, what, uh, let's say, monetary value will come from them. Uh, but what's important is that the exchange that we'll be making with the persons who uh, give some donation for them and take them to their home. Yes, I was just going. I was just going to come on to that. Um, <coughs> what's what will actually be taking place is the person will be making a donation to the building of Srila Gurudev's temple in Navadri. So, you win both ways. You get a chance to make a nice donation for your eternal benefit and for the eternal benefit of all living entities to build a temple in the Holy Dham under the auspices of a Rasik. Mahabhagavat Vaishnava. So, who can calculate that benefit? And then, of course, you have a chance to take one of these paintings home and live with the paintings in your home and worship the paintings and have these paintings uh, inspire you and inspire your Krishna consciousness and inspire all the people that come to visit you. And the, so future, and the future generations. Sorry? And the future generations you'll pass it to. And the future generations you'll pass them on. I mean, they're already worthy of being in a, in a museum, but, you know, that's not how we live. We don't put our, the things that we hold near and dear in museums. We like to live with them and worship them and be inspired by them. So you can pass them on to future generations. I've had uh, the pleasure of having some of uh, the BBT paintings in my personal possession in the past, uh, paintings of Mahadev and, and others. And I can tell you, <clears throat> having a painting on your wall like this in your home completely transforms your, your house. Even if that's the only thing you have in your house, it, it completely transforms your house and your life. Uh, you mentioned that these paintings are like the birthday necklace. Hadi Bo. Koma Gyanam Timarandasya Gyanam Jana Salakaya Chaksuran Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Guravena Guravena Chandraya Radhikaya Itvadalai Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tada Bhaktaya Namo Nama Yam Pravrajanta Manupeta Mapeta Krityam Dvaipaya No Viraka Taruajuhava Putri Titanmaya Taya Tang Sarva Buddha Hridayam Muni Manatos Me Pakyavahina Parada Lakshay Chittasya Kamadita Ranga Madi Kripamai Tvam Sharanam Prapadyam Tavoivasmi, Tavoivasmi, Najivami Tambina, Iti Vigyaya Radhe Tamma Mamcharanantike, 
First I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable Diksha Gurudev. Nijalila Pravishta Om Vishnupad Astotara Satishi Shimad Shila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable Shiksha Gurudev. Om Vishnupad Astotara Satishi Shimad Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Gosai Maharaj to all of our Guru Varga, disciple succession, and all the assembled devotees. Uh, Buddhara Prabhu was bringing back old memories of Srila Prabhupada as he guided us to make uh, paintings, or as he called them, windows to the spiritual sky. So, uh, just to let you know that in Houston, in two weeks, uh, we'll be having a presentation with slideshow of the whole history of Srila Prabhupada in the art, and he, how he guided the art during his manifest stay. And we may also do this again also in Houston. So, um, we'll go over the drawings and paintings as a chronology, in terms of when it happened. In 1993, Srila Gurudev asked me, because I had shown him some weeks just prior to that, some old slides of my paintings that I had done under Srila Prabhupada's guidance. Not anticipating anything, because I thought association with Gurudev meant no work, just bhajan. But I just showed it to him for uh, just some wonder. Then uh, he asked me one day, can you paint my heart? So uh, I didn't know what to say. So he brought me into the next room. This was in Mathura when he was on the second floor. And he showed me um, a very large painting that an Indian person had done in the Indian uh, stylized way. He said, I paid 3,000 rupees for this, but it's not at all to my liking. Radharani looks too old and the proportions aren't nice. So can you do a nicer version? So in a discussion with Guru Dave, it came out that if I were to change one thing on that painting, everything else would look worse, and I'd have to keep going around changing everything. So um, this is how it finally came out. But it started with, and you've all seen this, but this is a new print that was just made in India, and they're available down the bottom of the hill for the rest of the festival. So um, this started with showing Gurudev drawings, and he would say, no, Radharani doesn't look realistic there. Oh, yeah, somebody else. Can. <laughs> Thanks. Radharani doesn't look realistic there, or she looks too heavy set, or she looks too old. And so, right from the very beginning of the drawing, it was on Srila Gurudev's guidance. And in case I forget to mention it later, because I'm remembering it now, the conversations that I'm telling you in brief about how this painting was developed and what Buddhara Prabhu said was right, not only with uh, Srila Prabhupada, but also with Srila Gurudev, that particularly referring to this picture, Gurudev said, this is not a picture, this is Archa Vigraha, and the uh, worth is lakhs and lakhs of dollars, or unlimited. Uh, and it came out of his heart. And when the painting was almost finished, because... Every time I looked at it, it looked different from what I did. It kept changing itself, and the face, facial features kept moving around, and there's ten legs under that one. I just, everything I did was wrong. Or it seemed right at the moment, and then the next day I came in to look at it, it was wrong. So then, four and a half months down the line, and I was working many, many hours a day on it, but it was just looking like paint. And then towards the end, um, Gurudev uh, called me from Vrindavan to Mathura, and he said, um, 
wherever you can find room, not to make it congested, but wherever you can find room, I want you to put, like shadows, the manjuris looking in and watching and waiting for their turn to come, to come in and do their service. They don't have to be called. Just by uh, seeing the various ecstasies and hearing the discussion between Radha and Krishna, they would know exactly when the right moment to come in is to help Krishna in his services to Radharani. Like you see on the sides, some uh, jars and plates of paraphernalia like uh, kumkum and aguru and tambul. These are all various um, unguents that Krishna will serve Srimati Radhika with. And they know exactly the right moment to come and give it to them and bring him more service articles. Uh, and Radharani then would be Krishna's uh, worshipable deity. So it was almost the end of the painting, four and a half months. And uh, so then I put them in. I put the manjuris in. And then I asked them, uh, can this be so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so manjari and so-and-so? He said, yes. I said, is that my kalpana, my imagination? He said, no, that's yoga maya, that's so-and-so. And I said, can I tell anybody who they are? And he said, no, they will have to realize by their own bhajan who those manjuris are. Then, some, then as soon as they were there, then the whole painting started... I was the same me doing my uh, strokes into the darkness. But then, just by them being there, the whole painting started moving in the right place by itself, which indicates that only by their mercy can one enter into the service of Radha and Krishna. Then, towards the very end, when there was only a few days left, um, uh, he told me to put the... Uh, two very significant lockets on, or necklaces on Radha and Krishna. On him is the um, Kostaba gem, which is, he said, make it more brilliant than millions of suns, and like with rainbow-like colors. And on Srimati Radhika, on her neck, is the famous Shamantaka jewel, which uh, came from the head of the demon. Uh, Sankachuda and then Krishna wanted to give it to Radharani but he didn't want to uh, make any of the other gopis jealous so he gave it to uh, Balaram because he knows Balaram knows his heart Balaram gave it to Madhu Mangala Madhu Mangala gave it to Lalita and Lalita gave it to Radhika so in this way Krishna avoided any incidents so that also is more brilliant than millions of suns and with all the colors of the rainbow in it. Then at that, on that meeting, and I would bring it to him every two or three days, sometimes uh, those of you who have been in India, you know about the auto rickshaws. So we would put, it's a very large painting, about five feet long, and we put it sticking out the two sides of the auto rickshaw and drive it, of course, in a, in a very strong cardboard, uh, not cardboard, but wooden crate type of effect to protect it. And uh, every two or three days we would travel from Vrindavan to Mathura to get further um, guidance from Srila Gurudev. We brought it to Bombay when he was giving lectures there, everywhere, so that he could keep making the pictures. In Bombay, that's when he told us to put Bailey, uh, Jewy, that is, um, jasmine flowers and other kind of flowers in her hair. So at the very end, when we were meeting about the lockets, I said, I don't understand this. This painting has taken me five months to do. And all the previous ones I did for the BBT during Srila Prabhupada's time only took maybe a month, sometimes in marathon times, two weeks. So why did this painting take so long? So he said, your previous paintings were done by your will, but this one was done by my will, and I had to push my will through your will. <laughs> and that's why it took so long. Now, all the details of the Vigraha, we'll say, are under Gurudev's guidance, because he manifested the picture from his heart. 
by including Krishna's purplish transparent shirt. Gurudev said that if a young boy wears a transparent shirt, it looks very beautiful. And who do you think posed for Radha and Krishna? Of course, uh, Gurudev told me to get one of these little, like one rupee pictures because Vrindavan artists had been trying to do this picture very traditionally for so many years. And this is the picture you find in actually the place of Radha and Krishna's Rasalila pastimes, the um, thousands of years old or eternal Seva Kunj in Vrindavan, which is just a couple of blocks from our Rupsanath and Gaudiyamad, where on the second floor uh, this Vigraha is situated. And uh, Chula Gurudev performed one evening a Pran Pratista ceremony, as one does for the deities, installing this Vigraha and also Rupa Manjri and Rati Manjri, with Arti and uh, Kirtan and mantras. Um, and since then, they're treated as deities, just as uh, Radha Vinod Bihariji downstairs on the first floor with regular artis, putting them to rest, waking them up, and uh, boga offerings. And Gurudev ordered when the painting was finished that they put, be put in this room on the second floor, which would become uh, the altar. And he uh, ordered us to get life-size deer and peacocks and um, like a forest of, you know, hanging creepers and bracelets and perfumes, just as it would be in Seva Kunj or Niruvan. Um, so, Gurudev posed for Krishna, because we had these little pictures that they sold in Hoi Bazaar, but they were very stiff and didn't have the subtleties of this. She was turned in a different way, she was looking at Krishna with a smile, but that's not uh, the mood of our Guru Parampara. So, Gurudev posed both for Krishna and for Srimati Radhika. The one on Krishna's chest right here and the one on Radharani's neck. Now, it's hard to see, but probably the big pearl-looking thing. And on Radharani, the first necklace that you come to, I think. Second. Uh, I have to see. Yeah, probably. I think it's the garbage one, probably. Um, so, yeah. So, in case I forget to mention it later, the conversations that I'm discussing now, um, why, how is it that it's so much easy for my memory since it happened in 1993? One of the reasons is that we used to record, well, now still everybody records what Gurudev says, but we would record every conversation so that I could hear it again and again as the paintings developed. <coughs> And then we transcribed them, so the Harikata began in those days. And so we made up, at that time, uh, the conversations with the dates and the places. Sometimes they're just very small like this, and then you go on to the next one. So if somebody would volunteer um, at the end of the class to uh, Xerox them, then uh, in a day or so we can give them out to anybody who requests them. And similarly, in case I forget to mention it later, um, as you know, there are also paintings of Rupa Manjari and Sri Rati Manjari on the two sides of Seva Kunj, which many of you have on your altars. And the conversations that led up to those uh, Vigrahas manifesting are also recorded and on here. So if anybody would like to uh, Xerox 50 or however many copies, or a couple of people would like to help with that, then we can distribute them freely to the devotees. So, as I mentioned, all the details of this Vigraha 
came from Srila Gurudev's, of course, heart and words. Regarding the two parrots that are sitting up on the branch, one is Sukha and one is Sari. And you can read a very elaborate their conversation in excerpts from Govinda Lilamrita. But in short, uh, the Sukha, the male parrot, is uh, explaining in various ways how Krishna is superior to Radharani. And the Sari, the female parrot, is uh, expressing the superiority of Srimati Radhika. And then Gurudev said, finally they come to a compromise that together they're both supreme. And on both sides of their throne are um, Tulsi, big Tulsi plants. And Gurudev said to make the uh, Kadamba trees with uh, creepers surrounding them. And that uh, symbolizes or is a uh, udipan or a stimulus to Radha and Krishna, that Krishna wants Srimati Radhika to be like the creeper and Krishna like the tree. Um, let's see, is there any more on that? Yes. Uh, Gurudev said, lakhs and lakhs, that is hundreds and thousands or millions or unlimited pastimes belong to this scene. But one of them is, um, in one of the visits I made and showed him the picture, he said that um, Krishna was worried that Radharani's main nature is um, Bhamyabhav, that is contrary nature, playing hard to get. But now she's so um, easygoing and submissive. This does not make her... This does not give her her highest happiness or me the highest happiness. So he's thinking what to do to um, inspire her normal mood. So he pretended to commit an offense, and he came late. And on top of coming late, uh, he pretended that he was thinking of Chandravali while looking at Radharani. So he said, oh, my dear Chandra." Anani, <laughs> because Chandra Anani means one whose uh, face is as beautiful as many moons, and Chandravali means uh, like a beautiful moonlight creeper, and that refers to Radharani's rival, who's only her uh, expansion anyway. So Radharani was already in a rejecting mood, and now it's total rejection, and you can just go back there. And I don't want to have any relationship with you anymore. She said, I can see why you have these beautiful colors on your face, like red and uh, purple. You look like Neil, Neil, Arud, Neil Rudra. Neil means uh, like a purple. Rudra means like Lord Shiva. Oh, you look just like Lord Shiva, purplish blue. Because uh, I can tell you've been with some other gopi, and that's how you got all these signs on your face. But what really happened is, Krishna gets so absorbed in Radharani, he totally loses himself and forgets who he is. As uh, you've been hearing in the last couple of nights, Krishna is a Dwayagan Paratattva. Everything is in him. Everything is emanating from him. And yet when he looks at Radharani, he forgets who he is. He just gets lost in her. And because um, he's absolute, he's non different from his thoughts. So he's so absorbed in her that the thoughts of her go on his body. So it's actually her eyeliner and her lipstick that's now on him from his absorption. And she's saying, I know why that's there, and you can just go back to where you came from. Um, and then Krishna is going like this. Oh, so Lalita is convincing her. He was just a moment late. He never thinks of anybody else anyway, but in front of you he especially can't remember any other gopi. So then she said, finally, after much coaxing from her sakis, she says, okay, uh, I'll forgive him but he has to beg pardon and serve my feet and paint my feet. So Krishna um, 
becomes thrilled. This is his desire. So he takes a paintbrush made of a peacock feather, the end of a peacock feather, or a brush, uh, a soft brush, and he writes his name. You'll see his name on, the, on her lotus feet, around her toes and uh, on the bottom, because he knows better than anybody that Nam and Nami are one. Myself and my name are non-different. So if I put my name there at her feet, then I'll be there forever. So, but as soon as he started touching her feet, his heart immediately started trembling and his hands started trembling. So what came out was an art, not exactly a neat name, but like an art. And Gurudev said, don't make it like a heebie-jeebie, like too congested, but make it his name but like an art. You can imagine if God is writing and he's trembling in ecstasy, what kind of artful thing that would be. And then Gurudev also said to, um, he gave me a picture, a Xerox picture. He immediately sent out one of his brahmacharis uh, from his book to get a Xerox picture of her hand. You know how they have these black line drawings of the, um, what do you call those, markings of her hand. He said, don't put them all in because then it will become too congested. But make a few that will look nice. So if you look close, you see some markings on her, auspicious markings on her hand. And uh, I think that will be the end for this picture because there are so many others. He said, this picture will be famous all over the world. Oh, she has a shawl like this, but you notice the see-through shawl, because the gopis are very chaste and si simultaneously very revealing at the same time. Yes? You said Guru, they said there's hundreds of pastors. Millions in unlimited pastors. Well, that's one of them that he told. There are so many. Yeah, that, that's a, you can call that a prominent one. He's told you more? Well, he's told everybody more, and they're in so many books also. Maybe as we discuss the other uh, paintings, we'll also mention more. That's uh, tambul or uh, pan. It's made of um, what kind? Betel nut leaves and some spices inside. And I once asked Gurudev uh, regarding that that they took that they both and the other gopis also they <coughs> eat betel nut leaves, which are an intoxicant. You know, like people chew pan, and so their teeth are all red in India. It's an intoxicant. So why do Radha and Krishna need to take an intoxicant to um, increase their brain? Like people in the material world, they get drunk and then they have all kinds of loving relations. So, and, and also, why do they drink um, honey wine also, which is made of honey and um, the juice mixed with the juice of different fruits. So Gurudev said, they're not getting intoxicated by the betel nuts or by the honey wine, because the honey wine and the betel nuts are just made of the forest of Vrindavan, and the forest of Vrindavan is just an emanation of their own frame. So it's their frame itself, Mahabhav, and Herman Nakyabhav, which is uh, already the highest ecstasy in frame, uh, the highest intoxicated ecstasy, mad and ecstasy, and it's increasing unlimitedly. It's already unlimited, yet it's increasing unlimitedly at every moment. And they just use these things as a excuse, excuses, because everything in existence there's only Radha and Krishna, Shakti and Shakti Man, and they expand as everything else to expand their pastimes. Okay, then I don't see the. Um, Oh, that's right. So the veil is transparent, so she's looking away from him, rejecting him, but she's also glancing at him with her sidelong glance. And Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati Thakur sang, or wrote, that with simply her sidelong glance, Krishna faints, his peacock feather falls from his hands, his um, pitambra, his robe falls from his shoulders, and he's just about to faint, and he does faint. So what to speak of if she would look at him head on? 
So she's giving him a sidelong glance there. And Gurudev said, this is Kila Kinchi Dubav. It's a combination of apparently contradictory moves of simultaneously crying and smiling and anger and flirtation. And both Krishna and Radha are um, experiencing that Kila Kinchi Dubav. And the, yes. You speak louder? Somebody told me that Krishna became so amazed at um, what he was seeing that he, he decided he wanted to taste what Shrimati Radharani was tasting and decided to add that himself. Is this correct? Well, something like that. He, those are his three desires. He becomes so overwhelmed by her love and her, uh, her ability to taste in him what he can't taste and her happiness, that's 10 million times more than his, that, um, that he came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sometimes he's looking at himself in a mirror or in a reflected pillar and he becomes so overwhelmed and enchanted by his own image that he that desire increases to the point where he wants to love him like Srimati Radhika and that makes him uh, want to become Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's so many ways to see it. Yes? The Bob that's achieved in the when when uh, Mahaprabhu is present, is he achieving those same in other words, does Krishna achieve the love What Krishna desired to achieve is achieved as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, the, so he, he, he has all the same uh, feelings and emotions as Srimati Radhika? Krishna has all the same emotions and moods as Srimati Radhika, almost. In that, in that oh, so, it, so it doesn't fulfill it 100% as Srimati He can never be Radhika. He, can, he experiences her Madhunaki Mahabhav to his fullest extent, but he can never become her. She always remains as a separate person and watches him in the form of Gadadhar Pandit. Yes, his desires are fully fulfilled. He experiences all her moods. In fact, what we don't know, when I said almost, I just meant that he doesn't become her. He can't take her moods, because some people say he stole her moods, and that's why he's called Gora Hari. But he can never steal her moods, because she's always too alert, because she's his intelligence. She's his intelligence. She's the embodiment of his intelligence. So what's the difference? It's not stealing a mood, so he's what? He, like we adopt the mood of our Gurudev, we want to. But still he has his mood. We couldn't take it from him. Thank you. <coughs> oh, Gorda Thai. Where is Gorda Thai? Oh, so, then, but then, just quickly, the next two paintings were Rupa and Rati Mandris. And uh, if we had them here, they are here? Oh, they're very small. Okay, we'll discuss Gornitai first and then go to Rupa and Rati. Um, okay. Um, all right, while he's changing the tape, we can bring Rupa and Rati right here. I hope none of you are hungry because this is going to be a long class because you can see we're just starting. That she's really uh, starting to get pleased. In fact, um, she's wearing a nose ring. You see, she's wearing a nose ring. And uh, those of you who've seen these uh, pictures of Rupa and Rati close up, you see that they're wearing a nose ring. And nose ring here, coming down from the nose, and nose ring here. Um, so, um, one of my god brothers told Gurudev at one of the times that I was showing him the Rupa and Rati paintings that we shouldn't have prominent nose rings because it covers part of the mouth. 
So Gurudev said, no, unless nose ring is there, one cannot be a gopi. And then he told one pastime of the significance of the nose ring, which is uh, Radharani is in Man, and she refuses to talk to him. So Krishna came over, and she's sitting there stringing a garland. And Krishna's standing there waiting for her to look up, thinking that, well, if she just looks at me, then I can strike up a conversation. I can you know, make such a wonderful face, that expression, that it will just charm her. But she's not looking up. And he's waiting and waiting, and so many minutes are going by. And he's just standing there, getting more and more frustrated. And she's becoming more and more happy that, you know, he's under her control. And she's starting to smile, but she doesn't want him to know that she can't help that his smile is coming. So she covers it by pretending that she's fixing her nose ring as she's making the garland. So all the, all the paraphernalia are all manifestations of her Madhunaki Mahabhav, her love for Krishna. So... Um, Gurudev, uh, after the Seva Kunch painting was done, Gurudev told me that there's two alcoves on the two sides at Rupsanatam Gaudiyamat, and he wants manjaris there, Rupa and Rati. And uh, he said that they are not jivas, but they are her Kaya Vyua Rup, manifestations of her body. And they are manifestations of her various moods. Various manjaris and sakis are manifestations of her various combinations of moods. And um, this is a little bit hard to explain because Gurudev wanted two things, two things in one picture. That is, he said, she's standing at the doorway of the kunj. And Radharani is inside, alone, in man, in transcendental loving anger. And Krishna is not there. And she's waiting so that just in case that black snake comes, her order is to keep them out. She doesn't ask Lalita and Vishaka to do this. She orders only the manjaris to do it because they'll never take a bribe or be convinced by Krishna in any way, like Lalita and Vishaka might. So, uh, she's standing here, waiting on guard as a chokidar, that if that black person comes, she'll send him away. And then he comes, like a cat, very quietly and stealthily, and with his... Um, shudder around his neck as one does when he's very humble and apologetic. And before he's allowed to come in, Rupa Manjri or Rati Manjri or their assistants will say, before we let you in, first tell us where you came from, because we're ordered not to let any black snakes in here. So, so such a person who can control Krishna like this, nobody can bluff that guru in this world. Nobody can cheat him or hide from him. So, um, then Krishna makes up some story where it's not even made it up. That he said, I was trying to get here, but then I was waylaid by Bhadra and Saidya, and I was forcibly pulled against my will. So, no compromise. She says, no problem, just go right back to where you came from. I'm not allowing you in. So then Krishna would have to fall at her feet and weep and beg. And in one of Ashwarup Goswami's songs, he prays, just like we may pray, when will I be so humble as to fall at the feet of Krishna in sincerity? Rupa Goswami is praying, when will Krishna, when will I have that mercy that Krishna falls at my feet and um, begs uh, to, that I will um, uh, help Radharani to get rid of her man so that Krishna can come and see her. When I, when I was doing the paintings and I asked Gurudev um, that unless nothing's going to go in my heart, but unless something at least goes into my mind, it's not going to come out my hand. 
So can you tell me some things to think while I'm painting this? So Gurudev uh, told that prayer. I said, what prayer can I, prayers can I think of? He said that prayer of Srila Rupa Goswami. Another thing to remember is um, Utkalika Balari, one prayer, one uh, set of verses by Srila Rupa Goswami, prayers, that when will I be there when Srimati Radhika says, keep that black person out, that Subal Saka, that friend of Subal, he may even come in the form of a woman, disguised as a woman, but you should know that it's him. And I don't even want to see anything black. So you should cover your, all your black hair with white flowers, because anything black, I'll reject it. So even you gopis, if you want to come in the kunj, cover your hair with white flowers. I don't even want to see a black bee. So, um, so in that way, she's uh, Rupa Goswami is praying, but in her in, in his internal form as Rupa Goswami, and in his, in his other Vastu city, his Siddhadeya as Rupa Manjari, he's guarding so that friend of Subal won't even be able to get in as a disguise. Then if he's very sincere, Krishna, and weeps enough, then she'll take him by the hand and first getting permission from Srimati Radhika and then take him in. So here you notice she has a um, chamara, and that's for um, whisking away uh, mosquitoes or flies. And um, also she's standing on guard. And also, if, in the case, that Radha and Krishna are both already inside, then she's standing outside with her chamara and uh, waiting, because she'll know the exact moment when to go inside and render her various services. And Gurudev uh, was explaining how to decorate the kunj and the... The uh, doorway is made of flowers, and everything is made of flowers. Now, I also asked him, um, and during the course, he said, don't make them look American. Don't, don't make it without tons of jari on it, so that it looks like an actual gopi dress. And I said, uh, where should I make the garlands? And he pointed on different places of his own body. And that's why you see the garlands in all those places. Huh. Now, I think this is Rati Manjari. Um, when we were doing Rati Manjari, Gurudev said she's not covered enough, so we covered her, put more cloth on her shoulders. And he said that she should be holding, and you can see she's also standing there as a guard or waiting for her service, depending if Krishna is outside or inside. And um, holding uh, a plate of unguents for Krishna to serve Srimati Radhika, namely the um, uh, a guru and um, sandalwood. They do everything. They don't buy anything. They do everything by hand. In fact, Gurudev was saying, it's best when you serve your deities if you're making things yourself. Um, so they make their own um, ink for writing messages on lotus leaves and giving it, from, bringing Krishna's messages to Radha or vice versa. They squeeze their own flowers for making ink and they uh, make their own um, a guru scent and sandalwood paste, and what else is there? Um, Kasturi musk from the deer, and, oh yes, I asked if I should put Chintamani dust at their feet, because we know Chintamani, Gurudev was explaining Chintamani, Chintamani, anything you chinta, anything you think about, you get that right away, and Chintamani fulfills all desires. So, should, so I said, should I make it grass or should I make it the chintamani dust? 
and he said, make it grass, because their ankle belts are much more powerful than any chintamani dust for um, pleasing Krishna, for attracting Krishna, for enchanting Krishna. Not because of the value of the stone, because the their ankle bells are made of chintamani. Not because of the um, value of the stone, but because of the charm with which they wear it. And then, we don't have, for reasons that it's too confidential, we don't have um, typed up uh, transcriptions of these other two mudris. But I'll tell you a little bit of what he said. This is um, Vinod Manjari and any other Manjari. This is the exact words. Vinod Manjari and any other Manjari. So, um, as it's stated in the prayer, oh, I asked him when I was painting Vinod Manjari, again, please give me something to think about so that uh, something can come through my hand. I'm just a paintbrush, but something has to come in there. So, um, oh, he, I, he gave me a prayer to, um, I said, I don't know the Node Mandri, and I don't even know the um, your Gurudev in this world. So can you give me some prayers so that I can feel more close to them? So he said, Tambular Panapada Mardana Payadama Bisara Dibi Rindaran Yamahis for him Priyataya Taso Sayanti Priya Prana praise the Saki Kula the Pikila Sanko Chita Bumikai Kali Bumisurupa Manjari Makasta Dasita Sansweva. That means I offer my, I take shelter at the lotus feet of the Manjaris headed by Sri Rupa Manjari, who is always engaged in offering Srimati Radhika uh, water to drink, uh, water to wash her lotus feet, um, taking her out, tambul, taking her out on her um, meetings with Krishna, engaging in all the services, and they have such, they're so intimate with Srimati Radhika, she considers them her own body, that um, they go and serve in places where even Lalita and Vishaka and Priyanam Sakis like them hesitate to go and don't go. Um, then uh, he kept insisting on very, very opulent gopi, um, gopi dresses with lots and lots of jari. Now, you can't see it from this close, from this far, but if you get close, and especially if you see the original painting, uh, you'll see that the end of her uh, braid goes like that, comes like that, like the hood of a serpent. And the reason is, Gurudev explained on one of my visits to Mathura, when she was three quarters manifest, that what to speak of fainting when he sees Radharani, even when he sees Radharani's maidservants, he becomes so enchanted he's about to faint. So therefore, he becomes bitten by that cobra, by the enchantment of her moving braid. And you see that she's like this, kind of holding her, holding her veil, puncho. And one day he was inspired, you know, every walk is a dance, so you can see that everything's like a dance with them. Um, so once when he saw the painting almost finished, he was inspired to say, um, she's following Radharani, or taking Radharani rather, to um, Nanda Bhavan to, um, to cook with her, to have the sister in cooking for Krishna. So when Mother Yasoda sees her coming, even Mother Yasoda is so enchanted. And she knows that if they're coming, then Radharani is coming, even if Radharani hasn't shown herself yet. And she becomes so enchanted by this mandri 
that she says, would you like to marry my son? She says, not interested. This is the intrinsic feature of the um, mandris. Just as um, the bee will not sit on the mandri or the stamen that comes up from the flower, he'll sit on the flower and play in the flower and drink from the flower because the, um, not because the mandris don't have any sweet fragrance or honey, but because if he sits on them, they just go back and forth. So this is a characteristic of the mandris, no, no. Of course, it's also the characteristics of Radharani and the gopis, but totally with the mandris. So she's saying no. And she's holding fruit, waiting to go in for her services. Now she, you can see it's kind of dark out. It could be evening, because Guru Dave likes to get lots of pastimes in one picture. So, um, What's Jari? Huh? Jari is the gold filigree designs, both on the borders and inside, you know, as designs. Also. With Radharani, that is. Um, well, we mean when he's already down. Uh, sometimes uh, Radharani may pass by and say something, or his friend may say something, or revive him. I don't know too much on the Krishna side. There are some literatures, though, by Srila Rupa Goswami, very confidential. Um, now, one last thing about uh, the N2 gopis. And there's a generic name for any other gopi. You can call her any other gopi, or you can. There's a generic name that's used in the Gaudiya Mutt. Uh, generic means it's not a brand name; it's general. That uh, they call her Guru Rupi, Guru Rupa Manjri. Means the guru in the form of a manjri. And when my god brothers were going to visit him, uh, they kept begging him to ask for who is that any other Manjuri? What is, what is her name? Who is she? He said, anybody can think they are his guru. I can think he's my guru. You can think he's your guru. So he left it open for that. Um, so without further ado, I'll skip that part and go to the next. I just asked him, um, when, uh, when Rupa, uh, Sanatana Goswami was hearing from Lord Chaitanya about the um, uh, avatar for this age, the Kali Yuga avatar, and Lord Chaitanya was describing him, and Sanatana Goswami was getting too many ideas and started asking too many questions, and Lord Chaitanya immediately said, well, let's go on to Shaktavish avatar. So I'll just tell you one last thing about these two end pictures. Again, I said, I have to know at least a little bit how to think so that something can come through the hand. So he said, because they're looking, they're both looking in. He said, they're both looking at each other. Radha and Krishna are now, now it's night. And Radha and Krishna are in the kunja. And they're both looking at each other, like very happy and congratulating each other, that we helped to get Radha and Krishna together, that Krishna was previously with Chandravali, engaged in amorous discussions, and uh, one of them went there, one of the two went there and said, Oh Krishna, you have to hurry, uh, your one small calf is going to be killed in the very next second by um, one big bull demon that just came into Vrindavan, hurry up now, otherwise it will be too late. And then Krishna immediately jumps up and says, Yes, I'm just now coming, coming back. I'll be right back. You know how the Indians say, just coming when they're going? So then Krishna's uh, going, and the manjari leads him to Radha's uh, kunja. Um, so on the way, Krishna can't keep his balance. 
and he's because he knows where he's going and he's already feeling so much separation. When you get sometimes when you get closer to a goal, uh, you can't bear it more than when you could bear it when you're further from the goal. That's a whole class in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get the origin of Rathi Yatra book, that theory is there in such a way that I promise that you'll weep if you read that in that book. So everybody, if you can get that book, you'll be happy to. And you'll also weep. You'll weep in happiness. So Krishna was getting closer to his goal, but he wasn't able to keep his balance. He was like fainting on the way, as Radhika does when she goes to cook for Krishna in the morning. So in order to keep his balance, he put his arms on the shoulder of the air. Sometimes the air is a messenger. A mandri may be a messenger, or an air may be the messenger. When Krishna's late, then Vrinda, who's in charge of everybody, including the air, in Vrindavan, she orders the, her air servant to go and find out where Krishna is and bring him back. So the air may go to where Krishna is with Chandravali, and bringing Radharani's fragrance. It'll go up the mountains, into the seas, into the valleys, where nobody else can go, and into the deep jungles, and find Krishna. Bringing Radharani's fragrance, and then the air brings Krishna back, and Krishna rests his arm on the shoulder of the air to reach safely. So Raghunath, Shula Raghunath Das Goswami prays, when will I um, witness that scene? So, uh, when Gurudev was saying how they could be, one of the pastimes is that they're looking at each other, happy that they were responsible for bringing Krishna back to Radharani's Kunja. I said, but I thought that that's the service of Sri Rupa Manjari, because that prayer is in Sri Rupa Goswami's works, that when will I be able to give that message and trickily, in a cheating way, get Krishna out of that Kunja to, to where Srimati Radhika is. So I asked him, and as he says, I'm opening the, I give the, the key to open the lock to the treasure. So one thing that he says makes us open to so many other understandings when we read so many different things. So then Gurudev answered, they can all do that service. So all the followers of Sri Rupa Manjari, or all the followers of Sri Rupa Goswami, they have the same kind of services, though she's the leader. And uh, then, when I finished the Seva Kunj painting, I just remembered one other thing, two other things. He said, oh, thank you. Um, what can I give you for this? I have nothing to give you. Just like Lord Chaitanya told, um, King Prasaparudra, when he was singing Gopi Geet, I have nothing to give you, I'll give you myself. And he embraced him. He said, thank you, thank you. And then he said, he, like he was pretending to catch himself, and he said, oh, when one is near and dear, there's no thank yous. So if Gurudev doesn't thank you, don't mind it. He's doing service and he doesn't thank you. Mind it if he says thank you. He said, wait a minute. Are you trying to separate me from you? Then one last thing is that during the course of the painting, he told me that when you finish this painting, you're going to have so many realizations. So um, then I was coming to the end of the painting, and then it was the, I did my last stroke, and then I, phew, it's done, and then I kind of thought, well, where am I now? Hey, I'm in the same place as I was when I started the painting, hey, no fair. And I went to Gurudev and complained. And then, um, then I was remembering as I was going to complain that I was indiscriminately, I know this is a very good group. This is a Svajatiya group, like-minded group. And so I don't feel that I'm going to get any central reaction to this. But what was happening when I was doing the painting was that anybody, no matter whether they were vijatiya, you know, unlike-minded, against party, anybody, as Gurudev was saying things, I was just, as just as I did with Prabhupada, as soon as Prabhupada said something, I repeated it, that's how I still remember it today. So I thought, well, it's just the same thing with Gurudev. And so, 
then when I said to Gurudev, well, you said I was going to get so many realizations that I'm the same person, then all the flashbacks came back. And then I said, oh, is it because I told this to the wrong people, all the secrets that you told me? He said, yes, I put all the treasures in your treasure chest, and then you opened up the treasure chest top and everything flew out. <laughs> so that taught me to be a little careful. But I, looking around, you all look like Swajatiya people. So now, um, Gornatai, uh, Gurudev ordered me uh, some months later um, that every year he holds the Janmastami Eve procession through the town of Mantra, and many of you have been there, where tens of thousands of uh, Residents of Mathura line the streets on both sides like a parade, and Gurudev's party decorates all the streets, especially near the mud, but it travels far. And then people have these spray guns of scented, misty water that gets sprayed as the procession goes, and Gurudev rides on this big horse and chariot, and uh, there are other uh, chariots for the deities, Radha and Krishna. Born a Thai, and there are different kirtan parties, ladies, men, Indian, Western, uh, stick dancing, all kinds of musicians, elephants, decorated elephants, the night before Janmashtami every year. So um, he wanted them to ride on one of the uh, carts. So he wanted me to paint them. So he also posed for them. He stood up, this was in Mathura, he stood up from his bed and so graceful and grave and like in a swoon and made his feet do what they're doing. And um, so I was showing him first, as always I was showing him the drawings first and then he would comment on the drawings and gradually the drawings would become color sketches, I would show him the color sketch to make sure the color scheme is right and then it would go on to canvas. So uh, the drawing. Want to do it now? Okay. Switch. Otherwise, it becomes impossible to use the video. So when I was showing him the sketches, it was only going to tie, nobody else was there. And one big tree in between them. And then what you see as the top, that was the top of the tree. But the whole thing was going to tie that one little um, calf and a very, very big tree. That was the whole picture. And Gurudev was just giving various comments, nothing about the tree. And then we did the color sketch, the tree was there. Then this big, huge, four-foot painting, the tree is there. Gurudev's commenting on the way Gornatai should look. Then in the middle of the painting, like a month later, he said, instead of having that tree there, you should put lakhs of kir hundreds and thousands of kirtaniyas there. <laughs> And I'd already spent so much time. So if it ever happens to you, just don't worry about it. <laughs> it's a rope with a snake. <laughs> so then, I had to do everything I could to preach to myself that I have no independent existence, I'm his, and he can change his mind with me as much as he wants. So then we made all these people coming up the hill, and he said particularly who he wanted as prominent. That is the Panchatattva, of course, Advaita, Acharya, Srivas Thakur, Gadadhar Pandit in the middle. He also said what colors everybody's wearing, and um, Vakreshwar Pandit at the end with his leg coming out. The Lord Chaitanya said that. Uh, I have only one wing, 
for Kreshra Pandit, who's the dancer of the kirtans. If I had another wing like him, I could fly. Then um, I asked him if I should put um, uh, ankle bells on him, because in some of the songs by our acharyas, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and others, is described that he's wearing ankle bells. And Gurudev said, no ankle bells. But I said, but it says right here in the song. He said, ankle bells means his bobs, the jewels of his bobs. And he quoted um, Ujwala, what is that song? Ujwala Vada, Gora Vada Deha. That his bobs are his um, jewelry and his uh, sandalwood, uh, what is it? Those uh, sandalwood bracelets. Those are all his bobs. He doesn't really wear jewelry. And Nityanan Prabhu also, in this case. I know it's described sometimes, but he said none of them, neither of them in this picture should have jewelry. Just their bobs. And he said it's okay to put a garland, but he said Lord Chaitanya doesn't know if he's having a garland on or off, if his clothing is on or off, he's in too much. And he doesn't even keep a garland on for any extended period of time because he's rolling and fainting. But for worship purposes, then, like this. And then, because he's always talking about um, Radha Krishna worship and Manjuri Bhav, at that time, uh, so many things he was saying, just in normal conversations, in individual conversations. So I was feeling a little bad about doing it stupidly, feeling bad about doing a Gornatai painting, because Nityananda is Baladev, and Baladev can't enter into the intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So I said, um, and sometimes he says, don't worship Kornitai, worship Radha and Krishna with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Anyway, so I was having all these doubts, and I wanted to paint it with full enthusiasm. So I said, how can I see this Kornitai in such a way that it, um, in a Rasik way, that will um, inspire Radha Nuva Bhakti, or Braj Bhakti. So he said, you can think of um, Lord Nityananda is Baladev, but Baladev is also a Nanga Manjari, and he's also a Kanda Guru Tattva. That means all the gurus in our line, including Raghunath Das Goswami and Rupa Goswami and Viswanath Jagabari Thakur, they're all within him, they're all manifestations of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. And Lord Chaitanya is Radha and Krishna, or Krishna with the mood of Radharani. And then now, every year, well, he was going on um, procession. And then uh, we sent him to uh, Costa Rica so that they could take good photos of him. But now that we can make the G place, we can have them in Mathura also at the same time. Oh, then one day I asked him, um, is uh, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Saraswati Thakur, they, everybody in our line, they all have at least two forms. One form in Chaitanya's Lila, another form, one form when it looks like it's just them without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like when, like when Gurudev sits on the Vyathasana, that's a form. Then there's a form in Chaitanya Lila, then there's a form in Radha Krishna Lila as a maid servant of Radharani. So I said, uh, can I also paint um, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur here? Can I also think that any of the um, millions of Kirtaniyas is Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and uh, Srila Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada? He said, yes. And uh, uh, my godbrother Giri Raj Swami was there at the time in the room. He said, yes, and he's there, and I'm there. He wanted to really say, he's just saying so many names, but he was trying to indirectly say that, yeah, I'm also there on the party. Uh, I don't remember. I'd have to go back in time and think. In the 
Uh-huh. And I asked Gurudev if I could make, just to show that he gets into every detail. Uh, I had symbols, cartels in his hands, and he said, no, no cartels. Young? Well, Prabhupada told me when I was painting the Panchatattva that he, I should make him about 75 years old. You speak louder? Speak louder. Spanish. Adelita Charia, the new Holy Spiro. Is that correct? And I wish it was the beer that's here. I don't know. That, you, maybe you could ask her to and tell us all. In that same, I was going to answer that same. I was told that Dwayne Chari actually didn't have a beard. Did you did comment on that? Um, yes. Not to my knowledge, but all during the course of the painting, he was helping in the development, and he never said not to take the beard off. So, if he does say it, then I will, or somebody. Have you ever been told or read anything about that? No. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He was at the garage of the mechanic, and the, the worker and the mechanic saw the book. Who are they? Who are they? Who are they? Who are they? He told the word. If he hears an offense about the picture and he's trying to preach of the glory of the picture and somebody because somebody is saying they're just ladies. Uh, is he involved in the offense? No, he was he trying to. He couldn't go anywhere else because he was waiting for the gas. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's no problem. Now, um, then, after these paintings, Gurudev ordered me in Malaysia stop painting for the rest of your life. They will destroy you because of the fumes. So then. Uh, I stopped painting, and then about three years later, he said to me, uh, I'm going to be coming out with Gita Govinda in Hindi, and I want you to make line drawings, um, line drawings of each chapter based on some Bengali drawings that were previously done. The Bengali drawings were very, from a material point of view, 
you could hardly see what, what the picture was. It was so badly drawn. And they really were without any clothes. And it was just very unpalatable and unclear what was happening. But Gurudev told me to use those pictures uh, as, as the basic platform. So uh, then he was going to one country and I was going to another country. And then I didn't see him for a month. So during that month I was looking at the... Um, oh, and then I, I had one English translation of Gita Govinda. I said, oh, I have something that could help me with the drawings. He said, no, don't use them. They won't help you. But I thought, well, let me use them a little bit. And then I looked at the um, Bengali drawings, and I thought, I can't make hide nor hair of what it's trying to say. But, but by reading these verses, I can tell what I should do drawings of. So I made these very nice drawings of what I considered to be the chapters. And then we met again after one month in Los Angeles. And Gurudev hated everything I did. See, I didn't listen to him. And then he totally rejected all the drawings. He said, I wanted those other ones. I wanted you to use those as the platform. And I said, but, but, but. He said, okay, then make it better, but use them. So then I started, I hadn't drawn in so many, I mean, I would draw very quickly, or very not nice looking drawings for the paintings, just so that Gurudev could see what they were, or previously so that Prabhupada could see what they were, but they could never be considered as a finished picture, but now he's asking for line drawings. So we kept trying to show him the drawings, and he just like, every time I was around, he would walk in the other direction. And every time I would show him some attempt, he um, looked like it was just totally displeasing to him. And I was getting more and more frustrated, and I kept trying, and then finally I did a little ink, and he didn't like that. Then I tried harder, I did another one, and then he said, yes, now you're getting it. So he, he's like the um, stirrer, stirrer of the butter that's becoming ghee, and the, he's the controller, and the butter doesn't know what's happening to it. It just knows that it's boiling, burning, and all these impurities are coming up. <laughs> but the stirrer knows what's happening. So gradually then, because most of these paintings were done um, traveling from country to country, uh, usually with Gurudev, and sometimes without him. So the drawings were done. First we were in L.A., and then Badger, and then another country, and then back to India. So in each place, <coughs> what, what are we showing now? Well, not quite on the, we're not on the paintings yet. I'm very sorry that I don't have bigger versions of this. If you come to Houston and you see a presentation, we'll have very big, uh, what do you call it, uh, on the, when you project it? Yeah. So uh, gradually they were coming. And when we showed Gurudev the half-finished line drawing of this, and it was totally different in the Bengali one. Uh, Krishna looked about six years old, and, and she looked about 50, and there was no forest, but it was just like a, uh, the front of the house, but only the front with steps. But then if you look through the door, it was just uh, empty space, no house. It was really bad drawings. So he gave us direction to put it in a secluded, secluded forest. And uh, I asked, what's going on here? And he said, this was in a darshan in Holland, a lawn darshan. And he said, Krishna is, knew that Radharani was going to go to get water in the Jamuna, in her pots. So he just happened to be there. And he's longingly looking at her and saying, Oh, I see that you have two very heavy pots. Can I help you with one of them? And she says, No, thank you. I'm a chaste housewife and you're just a debauchee. I'm not interested in your help at all. <laughs> like flirtati flirtatiously playing hard to get. And uh, this is another one where the Saki is um, Krishna is lamenting feeling Radharani's separation, and the Saki is uh, 
trying to console him and to make him feel Radharani's presence or that they're soon going to meet. And this one is very interesting. This is the end of the book, when they finally meet. And uh, again, we got it from the Bengali one, but it was very difficult to see what they were doing. So uh, when we showed this to Gurudev and it was somewhat clear, I said to him, I think that this picture is not exactly in your mood because uh, Radharani looks like she's the subordinate one and Krishna looks like he's in a superior, higher position. So Gurudev said, this was in um, England, in Birmingham. No, 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 it's not like that at all. Um, Radharani is resting on Krishna's leg and saying, so, are you ever going to offend me again? <laughs> and Krishna says, no, I'm not. I promise. And she's saying, really? Really? So even though he's higher, he's still in the subordinate position. Gurudev was acting that out. And this is a Saki. Um, consoling Srimati Radhika in her separation. And another interesting thing about the making of this is he said that I should get a batch of artists together, just like Prabhupada said in 1966 and 67, and everybody should help in the making of the pictures. So in each country we met new artists who were totally inexperienced and hadn't done anything like this. And yet, Gurudev empowered them to play different parts in making the drawings and some of the ink parts. And some devotees ended up modeling. And just there's so many devotees that actually took part in the making of this. And this... Um, Gurudev also commented on in Holland, in that long darshan. I said, can this be Radharani? Because I didn't want to pay. If I'm going to do a drawing of just one person, it should be Radharani. And Gurudev kept insisting, no, this is a Saki. And she's telling Krishna, because Gita Govinda, as some of you know, is just, just conversations between Radha and her Saki, uh, Krishna and her Saki, or uh, Radha and Krishna, or Radha speaking to Radha, Krishna speaking to Radha, who's not really there, but he's just lost in separation and getting visions of her. So here, the Saki is telling Krishna that it seems like you're trying to kill Radharani. She's suffering so much in separation from you that she's just about to die unless you do something right away. And she's actually chastising Krishna and abusing him in various ways. And here, Radharani is feeling separation, and so deep in separation that, as you know, uh, in the spiritual world, there's separation and meeting and meeting and separation. So here, there's meeting and separation. Krishna is coming to Radharani as a sporty, as a vision. But not just as a vision. When he comes, she's really there. He's really there. And later on in Kurukshetra, he told her, you thought that you were just imagining that I was there, that I was just a vision. But actually I was going there and being with you. And here, this is towards the end, um, Radharani is pretending that she doesn't want to go and meet with Krishna. And her sati is uh, pulling her along, insisting that he'll die if she doesn't go in the next minute. And this is another another one of um, Saki trying to console Radharani in her separation. And Radharani is lamenting in separation. And Gurudev uh, told me that all of these pastimes in the pictures take place at Radhakund and during the day. This one was the drawing for this painting over here of Radha alone at Radha Kund. 
and Gurudev told me that she's thinking, because in Bengali there were um, some caption under each picture. So Gurudev was explaining the caption that Radharani is thinking, that Krishna came to me so lovingly with his sweet lotus petal eyes that were weeping in separation and pleading me and begging me to forgive him, um, be merciful to him, but I sent him away, I rejected him. So now, what is the use of my life, what is the use of my youth and my beauty and my opulent ornaments? With him not looking at them, they have no value. If I in my life, it's better if I'm dead. And here, um, as you see, it turned into this picture. Um, Krishna is uh, something similar to the Seva Kunj painting, where Krishna is begging Radharani for his mercy. And when this uh, painting was almost completed, not the drawing, but the painting, um, Gurudev uh, held it up like this at Kartik last year, not, not this past one, the previous year, and he said everyone should help with any talents that they have in assisting the uh, art production. Um, and then this is another one that Gurudev said, it looks like they're happily strolling through the forest. But actually, Gurudev said, in the middle of everything, she says, I shouldn't be here. This is unchaste and you're a debauchee, so I shouldn't be there. And Krishna's trying to pull her back. She's always making things difficult, not making things easy for Krishna. Because that gives him millions of times more pleasure when he has to work harder. And here again, he's trying to... Um, it was when we showed him this picture that Gurudev was finally showed some satisfaction. He said, they should all be like this. Before I showed him this, oh no, I was still showing him this, but it wasn't in as complete a stage. Radharani looked a little older, Krishna was a little, not these proportions, and Gurudev just said, I don't have time to look at this. He had time for everybody else. But whenever I showed me, I'm just going, I have to give class now, right here in Badger, in uh, near Guna Purple's house, just to uh, stir that. To see, are you going to say, okay, then forget it? I'm not drawing for you because I'm not getting the attention or appreciation. Okay. So, um, yes? As um, Krishna is very tricky, and Srila Gurudev is very tricky, so similarly, Shamarani Didi is very tricky. In, Bar in Varshana two years ago, I was saw these pictures and so excited. I said, oh, let me put them on the internet, the black and white. And so children can... Can everybody hear him? So, so the children can color. And she said, oh, it's a good idea. And she said, oh, you should go ask Gurudev. And she knows Gurudev's heart, so she knew what his answer would be. But she sent me anyway. So in Barshana, if you've been there, there's a tent and a narrow passageway in. And I've been trying to stop Srila Gurudev to ask him. And again, he was avoiding me. So I, I stood there and then I stood in front of him so he couldn't get through the path. The path is only about this wide. And I said, Srila Gurudev, Shamarani sent me to ask a question. And he said, oh, she asked so many questions. I won't. No, I'm not going to answer. And so I said, oh, please, please. And she, he said, okay. And I said, then I proposed my question, can we put these on the internet? And he says, oh, you know everything. You know, you decide. And I, and I was like shocked. And I said, oh, Srila Gurudev, I don't know anything. Please, please answer. And he said, no. It, it was so sweet. He said, no, this is only for our Sangha. These are so intimate that it is only for us. So this is such a gift that he's given us. Yeah, these, thank you. These also came out of his heart. And, uh, yeah, it's a special gift for entering his heart, actually. Okay, uh, then, um, then after these were done and they went in his Hindi Gita Govinda, he said, do you think they sh that these should be paintings or would they look better as paintings? And, I, of course, I just said, it's up to you. And he said, if you can make paintings, then make paintings of them. <coughs> so then we began. Um, he said, give the drawings to other devotees 
and they can start the paintings and then you can touch them up. So these are the ones that we, and some you start also. So then we started the Gita Govinda paintings. And I guess we'll talk about this one first. This is the one that he held up at Karti time. It's close enough, right? And he's also responsible for all the details of this painting. When it was almost finished, Gurudev said, she looks like a paka brijbasi. means brijbasi. And he said, her hands there is a perfect thing that uh, a lady in Man would do, scratching the, the ground with her nails when she's angry. And uh, even this dimple here, he said, the elbow is not complete. You should put some more variety in the elbow. And so even this dimple here in her elbow came from Gurudev. And the pastimes, as I said, are similar. And you can see a whole chapter on this pastime um, in the Gita Govinda. <coughs> That's in various literatures, that um, sometimes when Krishna's coming close, Radharani knows that she's there because the whole forest is turning sapphire, sapphire refulgent, so when Radharani's there, uh, <coughs> everything's turning gold, and Vrindavan is green because it's a combination of their blue and yellow. And when I was painting the Seva Kunj painting, he said I should put a little bit of reflection of his skin color on her face and a little bit of her skin color, golden, on his uh, face. So if you look closely at the painting of Seva Kunj, you'll see that. In the material nature, we have golden sun, dark blue sky. And green earth. Does it have anything to do with Radha and Krishna and their pastimes? Gurudev said, the more you know about Sri Sri Radha Krishna's pastimes, the more you'll know that everything, everything in this material world is nothing but a perverted reflection of their pastimes. He said, the, um, just as the sky um, gives a very soothing feeling, if you're in a you know, dark place, nowhere, and then you come into the sunshine and the sky. Why does everybody feel so happy? Because um, the sun, when I was in his room, he said, look at that picture. The picture had a reflection of the sun bouncing from the wall outside of Prabhupada's window, bouncing from the sun in the sky. And then he said the radius, or well, the, the radius is... Uh, or diameter, I forget whether it's the radius or the diameter of the universe, is four and a half billion miles, then ten times that thick is um, a layer of earth, ten times that thick is fire, then ten times that air, ten times that water, ether, all ten times mind, intelligence, false ego. Beyond that is the Brahma Jyoti, beyond that is Vaikuntha and then Goloka Vrindavan. So that sun that is reflecting in this universe is just a reflection of the Brahma Jyoti, which is beyond all those layers, which is just a reflection of Krishna's body. So just imagine how happy everybody is there, how soothing they feel when they see Krishna and Radha. So in that way it's coming from them. Um, then, uh, oh, I forgot, there's a whole series of paintings that came before before the Gita Govinda. So I'll go back. In 1994, uh, or beginning of 95, is when the uh, the Seva Kunj and the Manjaris and Gornatai were completed. Then, um, in 1996, in, from 92 to 95, uh, I was living in the Iskand temple and sneaking off to see Gurudev. And then they made that ultimatum in 95, and Gurudev tricked me. You have to switch? 
Okay, well, this part doesn't have to go in the video. Um, they made an ultimatum, that is, you either be with uh, Narayan Maharaj and get kicked out of ISKCON and you go to hell and Prabhupada rejects you and we're not allowed to live in our temples, uh, or you don't look at his books, don't uh, read his, don't re look at his picture, don't look at his, don't be in the same country as him, so many things. and then you get in our good graces. So I told Gurudev, um, I choose you. So he said, no, you won't be able to do good bhajan if you're with me because I won't be able to have a place for you to stay, I won't be able to give you proper prasadam, because I was living in the Iskand temple up to then. Um, so it's better if you go back there and just remember this, don't get involved with management, money, or position. So then, after a year of that, I realized that he was just, no, I didn't realize it, until so I got back to be with him in Europe, then I realized he was just cheating me, and I fell for it. <laughs> like Krishna told the gopis, go back to your husband, that's the chastest thing for a wife. And he agreed that he had cheated me. <laughs> I, said, I said, now I understand it, because Krishna told the gopis, you should serve your husband, uh, even if they're lame and blind and mean. And Gurudev said, yes, and even if they're toothless and poor. So he agreed that I failed the test. Shamaran, um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate right now, but I'd love to hear more about how long each of these paintings took you to do, maybe, and the line drawings, how, what time frame, you know, how long they took. And hear a little bit more about your process. And do you dream about these paintings at night? Moshe, <laughs> could you finish your point first? Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's got okay. So then when, so he agreed that he was cheating at that time. And then, um, then now I was fully with him. And then he engaged me in Bhagavad Gita paintings. He asked me to paint pictures for his Bhagavad Gita. And then I would do the same thing, showing him the sketches and then the color sketches. But then I asked him, I said, you know, I've given up everything. I rejected the whole society, even though they're making um, as much propaganda as they're making about you internationally, in faxes and emails and telephone calls and istagosis. They're doing almost as much of that about me. So now I've given, because I've left everything and come to you, so I've given everything else up for Braj Bhakti, for Gopi praying to be with you, and now you're telling me to paint the Bhagavad Gita on the Battle of Kurukshetra? <laughs> so like, was that a trick too? So he said, if you paint Bhagavad Gita pictures, you'll get Braj Bhakti. In other words, it doesn't come by any sadhana, it doesn't come by anything except Guru's mercy. We do the sadhana to show him that we are sincere about serving him. And then we simultaneously pray for mercy. But it comes, when the mercy comes, that's when we get it. Just like um, Sankaracharya was going to give a class, and all of his big scholars were there, and some illiterate servant was on the other side of the river washing his clothes, and it was raining, so the river was, had been raining, so the river was like overflowed, so he couldn't get there on time, so, but he wouldn't give the class. And everybody thought, we're the scholars, we should hear your class now, why are you waiting for this you know, laundry guy? And then finally he made it, carried from the swelling river, he carried the, his clothes high and he went through the river. Finally he arrived there and uh, Sankaracharya did something and all the Vedas started coming out of his mouth, even though he was illiterate. So then they understood why, because he was a sincere servant. So even if you, like Gurudev said, my Gurudev was, um, had a disciple, an Mohan, who had tuberculosis, spitting out blood, and he stopped everything and was taking care of his own disciple. So I, meaning Gurudev, I told him, you go and preach and I'll take care of him, even though it was a risk to Gurudev's <laughs> life. I'll take care of him. So Gurudev was cleaning up his stool and his blood and everything. He said, because I did that for my Gurudev and allowed him to preach and took that uh, worry off of him, um, he became so pleased with me that I'm sitting here today and you're all here hearing from him. <laughs> Uh, so, I'll show you the Bhagavad Gita paintings now. 
And then we'll go back to the Gita Govinda papers, because I wanted to be chronological. As you go along, maybe. No, as a matter of fact, on the contrary, I once said to Gurudev when I was painting these paintings, I said, you know, Gurudev, I feel like every time I make a stroke, I wait. Of course, this goes, all goes on very quickly. But every time I make a stroke, I say, okay, who's going to make the next stroke? Because I have no idea what the next stroke should be. And I can't go on. But there's nobody around me. I'm sitting alone in my room. And then I, I okay, I'll do the next stroke. It goes on fast, but every single stroke that goes on in my mind. No visions or anything. So, uh, even though I've been painting for 37 or 8 years, um, it's like that with every single painting. So I told Gurudev, I feel like I'm painting in the dark. I never know what the next stroke should be, because this is a transcendental thing, and it's out of my realm. And I'm starting with a white canvas. Even if I have a line drawing, a color sketch, still, it's like that till the last stroke. He said, no problem, just paint by my light, which means just surrender to me, and I'll take over the whole thing. But that's, of course, easier said than done. It requires advancement. Well, one devotee, Merle Dar, when he first joined, he asked, uh, was there something like that with Srila Prabhupada? So when Merle Dar first joined, he turned out to be a great painter. But when he first joined, he asked Prabhupada, how can I paint like Jadarani? So Prabhupada said, I have taught her how to paint. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Chanting while you paint. And then in 1977, in his quarters in Vrindavan, we showed him one painting. Um, and he said, in the beginning she could not paint, but by Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, the uh, talent came out. Now we learn, that was 77, 76, now we learn in um, 86, 96, about 25 years later, when Gurudev's commenting on that verse, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, this is a verse by Kalad Maharaj. That's the first half of the verse. Then the second half of the verse is one who engages in all these nine processes of devotional service, he is understood to be an intelligent person. And that's why Prabhupada quoted that. By Shravanam Kirtanam, the intelligence and talent came out. So in this second line, Iti Pumsa Arpito Vishnu. Vishnu here means Pumsa Arpito. Arpito means giving everything engaging in in full surrender, Vishnu. But Vishnu has two features. <coughs> one feature is Vishaya Vishnu, and one feature is Ashraya Vishnu. So when one surrenders to Sri Guru, then he gets all the blessings. Otherwise, Krishna is not accepting any of his services. So um, by Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu in the service of Sri Guru, then he blesses that something will happen. So, showing you the Bhagavad Gita paintings. Um, this is the cover. And this one was done also through a series of countries. In Malaysia, on Gurudev's first world tour to Malaysia, maybe it was 97. Uh, 96 or 97, I forgot. Uh, Gurudev, just as in 1966, Prabhupada invited me to paint in his quarters, and I did that for many months. So Gurudev said I could paint on the porch of his room in the house of Malaysia. And then he would come out from the back door of his room every once in a while and give in, excuse me, instructions. He said, actually, Arjuna was blue, like Krishna. But he said it makes a good matching if he's gold and Krishna's blue. So he said I should keep him as golden because that's also how he's known. Then Gurudev not only poses for Arjuna and Krishna, but he posed for the horses. <laughs> <laughs> the 
because I, I, it was taking me a long time to get it right. You know, just how they were up, and their faces, and their eyes, and their mouth, and their teeth. Gurudev kept telling me, no, that's not the right teeth, it's not the right eyes, it's not the right forelegs. And he kept posing until I finally got it to his satisfaction. Then he personally told me that it's not a mistake that I made blue insides of the ears. He said, these are special horses of Krishna, and they have sham-colored inside ears. Now he even posed for Hanuman on the flag, like that. With, incidentally, the club round part going down, all coming from Gurudev. And then, this here, if somebody wants to. Oh, okay. I don't know, is that, take this, the other no. one? No. It's okay. Yeah. It's not people saying This is Srila Viswanath Chakrabarti Thakur, writing his books, like Bhagavad Gita, with his handwriting here. And Gurudev even said what the uh, pen should look like. It's just, you know, a carved, and then they make their own ink again. And with a bucket, with this little spout there for drinking. And uh, I showed him the kunj. And as you can see, it looks like somebody decorated, like you decorate here with everything around the archway, the lights. So when I showed him the kunj there, he said the kunj decorated himself because they're also fully conscious and they can make things look like anything they want. Like Vrinda Devi, who's in charge of the choreographer of what deers come out, what birds sing, what they sing, what trees are there, what seasons, and what places where Radha Krishna is going. So she'll order the, okay, such and such tree, now you bloom, such and such bees, now you hum. So under her direction, the kunj itself made the decorations as though a person had made them. Sometimes the people make them. She has one of us, he's, uh, uh, servants of Vrinda Devi who decorate and place different paraphernalia in the kunjas for Radha and Krishna's pastimes. The manjaris do that, Nikunja Juano Ratikeli Siddhai. But also the uh, forest does it itself. Uh, forest Grove. And I asked him once, because I would read things in the Goswami's literatures, that the trees are made of, some trees are made of uh, emerald trunks with sapphire leaves and ruby fruits and um, diamond flowers, and other trees are made of diamond trunks with... Uh, Indranilla leaves, and like that. They're made of all kinds of jewels. And sometimes the courtyards of the kunjas are made of um, jeweled mosaics. And I wanted to know if I should paint them like that. And Gurudev said, no, the meaning of this is that because jewels and diamonds and gold is the highest conception in the world of beauty and opulence. But... You should make everything, and I asked him also about that, because if you read certain stotras or um, prayers about Navadweep, you see that there are jeweled pavilions all over Navadweep where uh, Mahaprabhu was dancing with his party. And Gurudev said, no, don't do that. I asked him that with the Gornitai painting and with the Radha and Krishna and the, their associates' paintings. And he, both times he rejected it. He said, no. Just make it like a natural forest, because our highest conception is jewels and gold and diamonds. <coughs> so when it says it's made of that, what they really mean is it's made of more than that. But you can't imagine, if it describes that it was just flowers, you can't imagine how beautiful it is. So it says it's made of diamonds, 
so you'll know that it's more than that and inconceivable to your imagination. Which reminds me, during the painting of the Gorda Thai picture, Gurde was saying that the uh, roots that are coming down from the branches of the tree are, because the trees are all fully conscious there, the roots are coming down and waving so that when Lord Chaitanya passes by, it'll be a nice breeze for him. <laughs> and when sometimes when the creepers uh, wave in the wind, they're not waving because of the wind, but they're calling, like, you know, come on, like in India, the Indian people go like this, and the Western people go like this. So the creepers are going, looking like they're waving from the wind, but sometimes it's just because they're calling the deer over, not deer, sorry, the bumblebees over, Krishna, that uh, they start singing in intoxication. They make beautiful uh, instrumental music and singing for Radha and Krishna and their associates as they're going through the forest. So that also has significance. The trees are also serving in the Gornitai painting. And um, I made, uh, previously, he was more robust, and Gurudev said, no, make him more, you know, thin and, like, austere. So we tried to do that. And other Bhagavad Gita painting is this here. This is um, Sanjaya speaking to Dhritarashtra, the blind king. What's in his heart? What's taking place 90 miles away on the battlefield of Kurukshetra? It was uh, Prabhupada had said he was like a TV in the heart of Sanjaya. And he's telling the blind king that there's no use in, in your sons even fighting because you're not going to win. He's trying to encourage him, but showing him at the same time that when Krishna is there, as the master of all mystics, there's no possibility of victory on the other side. So all this is light and dreamy because it's coming as a vision to him out from Sanjaya's heart. Then, one last painting for the Bhagavad Gita. This is um, Vyastev, the spiritual master of Sanjaya, who's relating the Bhagavad Gita, giving Divya Dristi, and this also came under Gurudev's instructions, that some light should be coming out from Vyastev's eyes. Dristi means vision and Divya means transcendental. So his own vision is coming out from his eyes into the eyes of um, Sanjaya. And as Gurudev said, paint by my light, or he can see by the light of his Guru. So one a disciple is able to have any capacity to do anything. Like two years ago, right here on this very floor in Badger, um, I asked Gurudev at the end of the class because he said that Brahma thought that he was stealing Krishna's cows and calves, but actually Yoga Maya had made him do it. He didn't, wasn't really doing it. Yep, Krishna told Yoga Maya to um, inspire Brahma to steal. So I said, okay, Brahma wasn't doing it. And then Gurudev said, and in the material world, everybody thinks they're doing something, but nobody's doing anything. It's just the modes of nature. So then I asked him at the end of the class, suppose a devotee distributes a book. And he's not thinking, I distributed a book. But he's just thinking, oh, I just distributed a book. Just casual nothing. Who actually distributed that book? So Gurudev said, Gurudev distributed. You can't create a dry straw. Gurudev is doing everything. So similarly, if one has any capacity uh, in any preaching area or any bhajan area, it's only the grace of Guru. Um, Sri Guru Jarana Padma, Kevala Bhakti Sadma. He's the only abode of all levels of bhakti, from Sadhana Vas to uh, Prema Bhakti, Madanaki Mahabhav, touching that to become a manjri. It's all grace of Guru. 
and all this is Gurudev. The um, manuscript, everything is all Gurudev's doing, and he saw it again from the sketch stage onward. Now we go to um, back to Gita Govinda. Then when we were making this painting here, um, we showed it to him in uh, Houston when it was half done. Is Asante here? She was there. I don't remember what he said. We got it on tape, but he was uh, glorifying the pastime and this one, middle one here. And uh, what did he tell you when you showed him when it was a, at a very early stage? You showed him the photograph in Hawaii. Do you remember? Oh yes, incidentally, although he glorifies the painting so much on so many occasions, a few years ago in Badger, we had, uh, there's always the Seva Kunj painting and the Manjuri's in his room. But this day he said, when I see the pictures, I see so many defects. But when I see the same picture in my heart, I see no defect. <coughs> and he also said, because I was telling you all the upsides, not these are the two, not downsides, but uh, he said, when you... When you look at this picture, the pictures of the Mandris, then you're seeing the general beauty. But if, when you see them in person, as soon as you see them, you'll faint. Yeah. Seeing the real thing. Oh, it's the dress. Oh, yeah, and then I told him I couldn't. Change the colors. Uh, make the, the choli blue. Because she always likes to be covered by Krishna. So I tried to make it blue, but because it was already so late in the painting, when it was blue, she just disappeared because of the type of background. So then he said, all right, make it the red, but make it a different kind of red than the skirt. So therefore, one became pink and one became red. Uh, well, I will read to you. Uh, I mentioned the story of this in very brief when I was showing you the line drawing. But in the Gita Govinda, there's a whole chapter devoted to this, and I'll read it to you. After Krishna um, offended Radharani in the Rasa dance by being uh, surrounded by so many... Curtains just closed? Okay. Shushi Radhasham Sundar Ki Jai. Okay. So then Radharani left, and then Krishna immediately became remorseful and began to search for her. This is one of the main features of Gita Govinda. So I'll read it to you, but first I'll tell you um, just the basic outline. That he's searching for her, feeling very bad that he offended her. And as he's getting more and more <coughs> absorbed in separation and grief, he begins to get visions of her. And those visions come and go, like somebody in Baba Bhakti, like Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is playing the part of a Baba Bhakta. He's praying and crying that when will Srimati Radharani let me serve her? Particularly, let me serve her by um, when Krishna is painting her feet and um, Radharani, in order to increase the eagerness of Krishna, she says, She'll say to me, 
oh, he's a Baal painter. He's a neophyte painter. He can't do very well. Uh, oh, Rati, you take it. You take the brush from him. So Rati Manjuri will go like that, push him aside. Krishna's completely helpless. You can see how he's controlled by the Manjuris. Complete anxiety, but he can't defend himself. So she takes the brush, because he's trembling. That's why he's not so-called not doing such a good job. So then Rati takes it away. Krishna's like, you took my service away. And looked like helpless to get it back. And so very confidently, Rati Manjari starts to paint her feet, the designs. All of a sudden, the paintbrush disappears, Radharani disappears, the scene disappears, and there's Raghunath Das Goswami on the banks of Radhakund alone. Then he begins weeping and rolling. And then the verse comes. And then another vision comes. Similarly, this is not only going on in Bhav Bhakti, where you get, you go from external consciousness to inner, then half inner, half outer, then back to external, then back to inner. That's because even in Bhav Bhakti, there's a slight obstacle in seeing Krishna perpetually. In praying, that obstacle is removed. Similarly, there's also so many obstacles because anything that's below the level of praying, including this material world, is there in the spiritual world in praying in Vastu City in its perfection and it's like pieces of it or reflections of it going down the line. Like the Shraddha, which is the beginning of Bhakti, but that Shraddha is also in praying. It's also in Madanaki praying, but Shraddha to that level. There's Nista to that level. Does that make sense? So, um, what was I saying? Oh, so Krishna's separation. Oh, right. So Krishna's feeling so much separation. So he's getting these visions, but they come and go. And then he's feeling her presence, but even in the presence of the vision, he's feeling like he's going to die in separation. And then the vision goes, and then another one comes. So I'll read to you how he's thinking and what he's praying. And you'll see that it won't, it won't be matching the picture for a while. So that's the caption in the book. It won't be matching the picture. It starts matching the picture when he becomes so absorbed in the vision that he's seeing that just like when devotees do bhajan, they enter into their bhajan and enter, permanently enter into the mantra and permanently enter into the pastime. So now Krishna is so absorbed and then he gets a vision, he's now entering into it and he forgets that Radharani's not there. He's now there with her in his separation. Sri Krishna is describing his own condition of separation. Whatever I'm feeling in separation of Radha, she must also be feeling. How much anxiety and distress she must be going through. And my offense is the cause of this pain. She is suffering so much because of me. I do not know how she will express her anger, jealousy, and other feelings when I meet her again. What will she tell her intimate friends? She must be making allegations against me, saying, He's so heartless and cruel. On the other hand, I will say, you know, just like people imagine conversations here. Why? Because Janmad Yasi Etaha, as Gurudev is lecturing at night, everything here has its origin and completeness there. I will say, without you, my prosperity, my associates, my herds of cows, and my good home. Everything seems insignificant to me. This is bhajan. Bhajanakriya. Really. Bhajanakriya, which begins here, doesn't stop there. I feel as if now I feel as if I'm directly beholding the face of Sri Radha with his arched, creeper-like eyebrows. Her angry face resembles a red lotus flower surrounded by hovering bumblebees. Alas! When I continuously realize the direct presence, now he's realizing her presence in his separation. Now when I continuously realize the direct presence of Radha and deeply embrace her in the temple of my heart, why am I uselessly lamenting over her and why am I repeatedly searching for, for her from forest to forest? In separation, Krishna is attaining a spurti of Radha. 
and thinking, I see her here in my heart, then what is the point of lamenting? And still I'm lamenting because she's not found here in the forest. O oh Radha, I abandon you to enjoy pastimes with other Brajagopis. Your heart is now full of jealousy towards them because you consider yourself superior. You are depressed because you are superimposing faults upon me. You have left this place to go somewhere else. You know, I'm innocent. One minute he's saying, I'm at fault, I did it. Then I'm, I'm innocent. You know how the whirlwind of contradictory emotions. What can I do? If I knew you had gone, I would have touched your feet and pacified you and begged you for forgiveness. Alas, it seems that you're repeatedly coming and going. Why do you not impetuously embrace me as you did before, being impelled by the exhilaration of love? So this is separation and meeting going on side by side. Oh, beautiful one, please forgive me. I'll never offend you again. Allow me to see you at once. I'm reeling from the pain inflicted by Kandarpa. Hey, Cupid. Oh, Cupid. Are you inflicting pain on me with such fury because you think I'm Lord Shiva? Why have you become so harsh? This is not the king of snakes, Vasuki, upon my chest. It is actually a necklace made of lotus stems. The blueness of my throat is not the effect of poison like Lord Shiva had, but a garland of blue lotus flowers. This is not an ash from a funeral pyre smeared on my body. It's sandalwood paste applied in the absence of my beloved. So go away. You have caught me by mistake. So he's mad. And this is what's going on in this painting. And he's now so absorbed in separation that he's now living in his vision. Oh, Radha, I see that you have... And going to that exact place where he knows she's going to get her water. And she's going there because he knows, he knows that she's going to be there. And he's saying, Oh, Radha, I see you have two big heavy pots. Can I help you carry one? No, thank you. I'm not interested in the debauchee. I'm a very chaste married lady. Then we come to... Is, is, that, is he contemplating that or that's what's happening? Both. Rather, rather say it? Both. Because Krishna is a dvoyagyan paratattva. One without a second. His thoughts are not different from him. If he's thinking, that's the same how reality. Do we, how do we understand that? We understand that? The, 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 show, the painting is there. Um, it's, it's there, it's real. It's there, it's real. Or it can be happening at another time. Because every painting has so many pastimes attributed to it. you got to read Gita Govinda. Now, after, Radha, after Krishna tries to pacify Radharani, and then she rejects him and go, he goes away, she laments. Or, because hundreds of thousands of pastimes, or millions, or unlimited, can go with each scene. Um, so here she is sitting at Radhakund, or in a kunj, at Radhakund here. And she's, now she's at the other end. Krishna offended her because there were so many other gopis. She left, she went to lament in a kunj, and he's not coming to meet with her. So on her side, just to be brief, she's imagining, and she's telling her Saki, Krishna wasn't speaking to anybody, he's just thinking to himself. So Radharani sends her Saki to go and bring Krishna, that I can't be without him. Even though he offended me, I can't live without him, so please bring him here. And the Saki leaves, and the Saki comes back, and by whatever the Saki says, Radharani is imagining it to mean that I went to see Krishna, and he's with, not even interested in you, he's with so many other gopis now. So she's imagining this. And she's thinking that now some very beautiful young gopi is doing this, that, and the other thing with Krishna, and now they're doing this. 
and now Krishna's doing that, and now Krishna's saying that, and now she's smiling, and now her hair is being loosened. But actually, the more she's uh, lamenting in this way, she's, um, you know, just like when you see a movie, you start thinking it's you. So actually she's remembering the pastime of her and Krishna, and she's getting more and more absorbed in that, and it's actually happening on the spot. So she's living it just then, just like Krishna's living it in separation. And still he's not coming because he can't come because he's lost, he's getting lost everywhere, he's wandering, or he's in one of the Astaslak figabhavs is when you're stunned and you can't move or you're totally devastated like death. So he's feeling separation from her, she's feeling separation from him, but they can't meet. She's and she wants to go out to meet with him, but she can't move her legs either. So she's asking the Saki to bring him, but the Saki didn't, and she's imagining that this is the Saki's report. So she's actually living in the intimate pastime with Krishna, imagining that it's happening with another gopi, so that she's simultaneously feeling separation, and simultaneous Madhya <coughs> Mahabhav rapture. So here... And then she's saying the same thing as when, as if she's rejected Krishna and he left because it's all different pastimes. I hope it's not getting too much round. <coughs> so here she is at Radhakund, and Radhakund we know is is non different from Radharani. So as her emotion is all in turmoil, the water is also in turmoil. Uh, so she's, I'll read this. Alas, alas, my immaculate youth and beauty are all in vain because Hari has not come to the forest at the appointed time. I have been cheated by my friends, so to whom can I turn for shelter now? O Saki, you said I will go and bring him at once. Just wait here. But even you have betrayed me. You said you would be return to the grove before moonrise, but now the moon has risen to its highest point in the sky. Somebody asked, I think it was you, Madhavananda Prabhu, just now, um, we have a moon here, we have a sky, we have earth. Does that have anything to do with the reality? So Radha and Krishna are the only reality. The moon is there. Did you ever buy a thing? I remember so many years ago they used to sell these rocks and make a fortune selling these rocks, that rock. like paint, paint rocks, and they would just be like a conversation piece. Huh? They're rock concepts. So there were nothing but rocks. It was all cheating. But to be like a conversation piece. Or people buy like vases to be like, huh? Yeah, any welcome. So it has no purpose but as a conversation piece. So the moon and the bumblebees and everything are expanded from Radha and Krishna as their uh, Vrindavan, a Raja Vrindavan, which is as worshipable as Krishna, because they inspire their pastimes, they give them something to talk about, something to compare Krishna with. Oh, Krishna is just like the black bee. It goes from one flower to another. As soon as it gets the honey from one flower, it just leaves it as though it didn't exist and goes on to the next flower. Krishna is the same way. That's why he's called Madhusudana. So, the moon is here, uh, just for the pastimes. There's no need for the moon in the sky because, as it says in the Gita, in that abode there's no need for sunlight or moonlight or electricity. My impeccable youth and beauty are all worthless. So there it's there in the Siddha, in Siddha Loka, and in Sadan Bhumi, it should be our, the whole idea is to bring us to that, that without surrendering to my Gurudev without serving him and then my life is valueless. Only, Gurudev said, only when we feel that kind of separation and uselessness in relation to our Gurudev can it ever come to be for Radha and Krishna. So my impeccable youth and beauty are all worthless because if they had any value, he would definitely be here. I am ruined. How unsteady I am in separation from that person person for whom 
loving union, I am sitting in this deep forest in the dreadful darkness of night. I lost all composure and senses. Where can I go? It is better to die. How much separation can I tolerate? I won't read the, um, the description of her imagination in the public context, but you can read it on your own. Um, so, yes. The color of her sari? Yes. What about that? Um, Vrindavan Prabhu is asking about the color of her sari. Generally, she wears red, which is um, the color of anurag, or great attachment. Um, but we made it a little off red, uh, just to be variety. And we asked her, Dave, is it okay if we make different kinds of colors sometimes? And he says she can wear different co kinds of colors sometimes, and sometimes according to the moon, she'll wear different colors. If it's a full moon, she'll wear lighter colors so she can merge with the light sky uh, so that nobody sees her. Um, am I supposed to read this out loud? Oh, oh I see. Okay, so uh, we're almost coming to the end of the class. Um, so if it's dark moon night, then she'll wear black or dark blue and wear uh, sapphire jewelry and make lots of musk on her face. So she merges with the dark night so that nobody will see her going out in the forest. And in this, in this song of uh, Oh Radharani Come to the Swing, Julian Yatra time, she's wearing five, five colors clothes. You know, it's so interesting to hear these Louder? It's, it's so interesting to hear these explanations of the paintings. Uh, when we buy the prints, like we've had these prints available, and some of them for a long time, isn't it possible to print on the back of them uh, at least some of the explanations no, or distribute a flyer that gives the, uh, the uh, Leela explanation? Well, this is a very elaborate explanation. But for, for these paintings, we have one-page explanations, brief, as uh, skeletons or outlines that you can further. Other people can tell you where to get more information. But we do have, especially, uh, we have posters now. Uh, where are the three posters? Uh, you saw the Save a Country. You saw the Save a Country. And we have... Venu Geet. We have a Venu Geet. Uh, soon we'll, we have G Clays also, which look exactly like the painting. You have G Clays? But uh, I don't have any here, but... Uh, they can be gotten, uh, maybe somebody can make an announcement. There is a website for that. Oh, I know you can just go to Bhakti store. Yeah, this is, a, this is just a poster, but the G-clays look exactly like the paintings. And this, you can see, even though this is just a poster printed in India, it's very, very close to the original. And we also have these, the same size as the and we also have zero. Oh, oh, this one. We also. Oh, this is a framed one. This is uh, from Nanda. This is we stole this from Nanda Gopal from Bruce House, just to show how nice they can look. It's nice frames. It was BhaktiStore.com. BhaktiStore.com. What about it? That's where you can buy the G clays later and, and you posters. You can order G clays, or if you want to order. Uh, uh, large quantities of posters later. You can order them from Bhakti Projects. Um, you can see this one bar Prabhu. Like if you uh, are doing a lot of preaching uh, to any communities where you live, you can order wholesale posters from this one bar. And if you want to just get any here, we'll have them here also down there. And, and descriptions. And then you can Xerox the descriptions so when you give out the posters for anniversaries, birthdays, bar mitzvahs, graduations, initiations, uh, for temples, weddings, you can Xerox the um, descriptions as well. Especially for new people. We asked Gurudev in Malaysia when we first had these printed. Um, Gurudev said, um, 
for a very long, long time. He said, these pictures are so valuable because you, you can understand why they're so valuable. They came out of Gurudev's heart. And in fact, for Sevakunj, he said, actually, this did not come from my heart. It came from the heart of Rupa Goswami. And actually, it didn't come from the heart of Rupa Goswami. It came from the heart of Krishna, because he's thinking, I have to do something. But actually, it didn't come from the heart of Krishna. It came from the heart of Srimati Radha, because she inspires him to think certain ways. Um, but, it, uh, but to this world, it came from the heart of Srila Gurudev. So, um, so Gurudev said in Malaysia that these paintings are so valuable, they're so rare, Durlava. For such a long time, they were, they were never available, and now they, were, now they are available. So then I asked him in Australia, because I'm always on the mental plane, what did, what did you mean by that? So I said, what did you mean by that, that you don't want them to be available, or that you, because they're so confidential, or that you want them to be available, or who can we give them to? So Gurudev said, anybody who likes them, you can give them to them. Because shraddha or faith makes the thing valuable. So anybody will appreciate it. Uh, Venu Geet? Uh, yeah, the Venu Geet comes in the bigger, the original size, which is even bigger. Yeah, the Venu Geet is a. Yeah, the G plays you can get life size even. Um, so Venu Geet is very interesting. I'll just be very brief about it. If you read chapter 21, if you read chapter 21 of Prabhupada's Krishna book, or if you um, read Gurudev's uh, either first edition, or uh, that is his lectures of Venugit, or the, Hin the English translation of his Hindi Venugit, which has this picture on the cover, and is, this is, I can't even begin to tell you how confidential this particular picture is. By, I can't even tell you why. But one day. Uh, anyway, so the whole Gopi Geet book is in here because the Gopis are not in the forest, they're at home. And they're lamenting that all the other residents of Vrindavan, like the cows and the calves and the deer and the Jamuna River and the clouds and the Govardhan and the rocks and the calves and the. Um, yeah, the Kalindi, and the um, demigods, demigoddesses, and the uh, those girls, Palinda girls, they're all relishing Krishna's uh, association all day long. But we're home, and we're so afraid uh, of abuse from society, and we're so involved with chastity to husband, that uh, we never get Krishna's association. And although they're always having it, that's one of the natures of um, Mahabhav, is that they give their, they have a certain love for Krishna, and they think everybody else has the same love. And they see Krishna always, this is Anurag, they see Krishna always, but they think, I've never seen him before. Every moment is the very first moment, so there's no tiring. In fact, Prabhupada said every moment is newer than the previous moment. So the gopis are lamenting and glorifying all the uh, residents of Vrindavan, like the cows who you can see that they have, um, and Vrindavan Prabhu from Hawaii has the original painting because Gurudev goes there so many months a year, so it's in Gurudev's room. So um, you can see that the grasses, the bunches of grasses are hanging out of the cow's mouth um, because the cow is now hearing Krishna's flute playing, so it's ears, and Gurudev, oh actually Gurudev also posed for this painting. The ears, the ears went up straight like cups, and they're taking in the nectar of Krishna's flute playing in the upraised cup-like ears, and then the sweet flute, which is Krishna's heart, which is the gopis' love for him, is coming um, into the ears, through the ears into their heart. And then the cows in Vatsali Bhav are embracing Krishna in their hearts. And then the calves, if you look closely in the back, you see the calf is underneath the cow's body, because it would be drinking the milk from the udders of the cows. 
but it neither swallowed the milk, nor did the milk fall out. The milk is like just hanging in the mouth and dribbling out from the sides. Because the calves are also hearing Krishna's flute playing. And Gurudev said, you have to have that calf there. And uh, so it's just dribbling. It can't swallow the milk, and it, the milk's not falling out. It's just hanging, because the um, ca calves have also lost all external consciousness. And then Gurudev also said that Baladev should be up front, because Baladev is elder, so he's like a father. So he's a mixture of coward boy and Vatsalyabab. And so the elder shouldn't be there when the husband and wife are going to be together, what to speak of the paramour. So he's going on ahead to give Krishna leeway there in the middle. But you can see that he's looking uh, back. It means he's not seeing back, but he's knowing what's going on. And all the other elderly coward boys are uh, going along with Baladev. Now I asked Gurudev, Baladev's holding a bugle, bugle, which comes from bugle generally we associate with the horn of the uh, cow, of the bull. The bull? Yeah, the bull. So, uh, not, it's not a bugle, it's a horn. Buffalo horn, buffalo, that's it. The buffalo's horn. So, isn't that like violence to take the buffalo's horn? So, Gurudev said, no, it looks like a buffalo's horn, but it's made of leaves. And therefore you see that it's green. Green buffalo horn. Now, you also see a flower, a yellow karnikar flower in Krishna's ear. Now, that also came from Gurudev. It says that he wears a karnikar and a flower. That's in the book. But Gurudev showed us what the karnikar flower looked like. It looks kind of like a, a bell. And then Gurudev was putting it from one ear to the other ear of himself, turning in different ways. That if the gopis are, you know how if you're, you're trying to get, like, if you want to have a picture of yourself, you're trying to get, like, the best <laughs> angle. <laughs> so, depending on where the gopis are, Krishna is always showing, this is the side with the flower. <laughs> Gurudev said he wants to look very debonair, like a, you know, like a casual guy. He wants to look really debonair for to attract the girls like a playboy. And so he has it on one ear, the side with the gopis are. Um, and also, somebody suggested, because he has a top knot, and on the top knot is described in the Vainu Gita that uh, the peacock feathers are there like a rainbow. So I brought, you know how sometimes you can buy in, um, uh, what is that, Bazaar in Vrindavan? Loy Bazaar, you buy the peacock fan that you give to the deity. So I bought one. And I gave it to Gurudev, I said, could you please show me where Krishna has it in his hair? And he did it on the side, top mount on the side, peacock feathers on the side, debonair, and facing Radharani. And the ropes, uh, Krishna has two ropes, one in his hair for binding cows and uh, cows' legs, and one for lassoing cows when they get straight. And the reason he has that is to show the gopis that I want to bind you also. Um, so, I mean, he doesn't do it that way, but they know the inner meaning. Because <laughs> everything that Krishna does has that inner meaning. Um, coward boys in the back, right. So the coward boys in the front are going ahead to get out of the way. And the coward was in the back in order to hold Krishna up, Gurudev said. He, he posed for them also. Krishna, Krishna, look! Look at us! See what we're doing. You know, we're doing some play thing. So that Krishna would slow down. So that leaves a lot of space between the back gopas and the front gopas. And in the meantime, the gopis who are in their houses became so absorbed in their bhajan that... Uh, they ended up in their bhajan. They ended up in the mantra. The mantras were describing Krishna in the uh, forest, and we know that the mantra is not a mantra. Um, hopefully somebody who's giving a class, maybe you can ask the next people who are giving class, to ask what are the five stages in chanting the mantra, either the Hare Krishna mantra and particularly the Gayatri mantra. That uh, the mantra is not a prayer. 
but it's actually the deity the mantra, is the mantra. So the deity is Krishna in Vrindavan. So their mantra contained all the things that they were singing about, and so they entered into the mantra by absorption. Thus they entered into the forest, they entered into the kunj. And one of the verses, Akshan Bhutam Palamidam Naparam Vidama, uh, is that anyone who, who has eyes, the perfection of their eyes is when they see, um, well, externally, when they see Krishna and Balaram, because they're trying to hide the fact that they're just interested in Krishna, so they say Balaram's name too, so now we're going to the The perfection of the eyes is to see Krishna and Balaram as they're going through the forest playing the flute. And then the deeper meaning by our acharyas, as Gurudev gave us, is that the perfection of the eyes is to see uh, Radha and Krishna. That's the deepest meaning. First it's Krishna and Balaram, then Krishna alone, if it was the gopis, in the gopis mood, and then Radha and Krishna, if it's the manjari mood. The perfection of the eyes is to see Radha and Krishna, because now the gopis are there. Radha is there, as assistants and associates are there, and now they're exchanging glances. Um, so this is the perfection of the eyes, and anyone who doesn't see this picture, in real, for real, anyone who doesn't see them exchanging glances, they, their eyes are useless, and therefore their head, might as, their head is also useless, and therefore they might as well have their heads struck down by a thunderbolt and just be dead, because there's no purpose in that life. So real bhajan is to think, well, no one we're doing bhajan is when we actually start thinking like that and weeping like that. But if I don't get your darshan, your pure service, then uh, my life has no value and I might as well be dead. So, she's looking at Srimati Radhika because she's inclined towards Srimati Radhika. Radhika first, then Krishna. And when you get really close, especially if you can get a big G-play, like even me who did the painting, when I was at um, Krishna Bhavani Devi's house in Ojai a couple of weeks ago, uh, whenever I was talking to anybody or doing anything, I just kept going like that to her big G-play on the wall. Because it like just pulls you right there, and it's like the scene is really there. So if you look close, you can even see it on this poster, it's small. That gopi, who's standing next to Radharani, she, you can see about three fingers coming around the side of Radharani, this side of Radharani. You can see three fingers. So that gopi who's in the front uh, is holding on to Radharani's waist. Um, and when we were in Delhi, I was finishing... See, this has a painting on top of a painting. Maybe you saw the painting uh, in 19... Uh, year 2000 or something, or in the 90s, they printed the first Venu Gita in Hindi and, uh, and in English. And it was a different painting. It looked just like that, but it was different. It's because in 1996, I finished the painting, and it was printed in Gurudev's book. But then in 2000, they were doing the reprint from the translation of Gurudev's Hindi book. And so I painted a painting over that to make it better. And I'll tell you some things Gurudev said about that, too. So anyway... And the, and the underpainting of this in 1996 in Delhi, 95, sorry, in Delhi, 95, because that's when I was leaving. Um, that's when I was cheated by him, and I allowed myself to be cheated. Um, uh, anyway, we were in uh, Pornim's house in Delhi, and I showed him that here this uh, assistant gopi has her hands around Radharani's waist. Is that okay? Gurudev said, yes, because she's thinking, if I don't hold Radharani's waist, then her waist will break, because it's so small and dainty, and Radharani, when she sees Krishna, she loses her balance and might fall over, and thus her waist may, may break. So she's holding it. And that's why the Mandaris tie uh, flower... Um, Am I going to go to hell for telling all this? Why they wear flower, um, that flower belt made of flower tassels because they want to, so that her waist won't break also. That's one of the reasons. And the water also, 
the gopis are lamenting that we never get to offer Krishna flowers, but the Jamuna River is, with her wave-like hand, she's offering Krishna flowers. And her water is also going around Krishna's feet. And Gurudev also approved of that. The water is offering obeisances to Krishna. There. And the deer, in the underpainting, if you look in the old Hindi version, the black deer was... Um, oh, I forgot. The deers were in different places. And Gurudev said, remember where? There was one deer there and two deer there. But uh, the deer was in different places. And Gurudev said, move the deer in such a way that the, um, the black husband deer will be right behind the golden wife deer. And because the, the gopi is lamenting that our husbands don't let us go. I'll have to tell you something about that. It's really heavy. If you're a spouse, either husband or wife, it's really interesting. Or if you're a relative or a friend, listen to this story. Um, so, um, uh, so the gopi is lamenting that our husbands stand there with sticks and we can never get out. But the, um, the deer's husbands, they're thinking that our wife is so much more advanced than us, we should just follow our wife. They know much, they're, they're much closer to Krishna, we should just follow their footsteps. And so the gopis lamenting that their husbands follow them. Um, and our husbands are against it. So Gurudev was telling the story of um, Vamandev. And uh, I think I've told all, I'm going to tell about this if you want to put it So um, he's telling the story of Vamandev that uh, Sukracharya didn't want Bali Maharaj to give Vamandev the vow that I'll give you three steps of land because he knew that he would take, he knew that he was Vishnu and he would take three full steps. So um, he was determined because this is material thinking. If I give to Krishna, I'll be the loser. If I give to Guru, I'll be the loser. So this bogus material spiritual master was thinking, if my disciple gives everything, gives the three steps to Vishnu, he'll take it all, and I won't have a place to live. So I have to do something to stop it. So he had mystic power, so he made himself very small, and he uh, went into the spout of water, the, the water jug, that if you pour the water to confirm the... Um, <coughs> Now, you pour the water and you drink the water. So, Sukhachari was supposed to perform the ceremony, but he was against it. In fact, he disappeared into the spell. So, Vamandev said, don't worry, I'll help you perform it. I'll help you with the vow. So, because he's a Brahmin anyway. So, Sukhachari stuck himself right where the cup meets the spout. So, uh, Bali Maharaj was trying to pour the water out and no one was coming because he was sitting in there. So, uh, Lauren Meyer said, oh, there seems to be a little obstruction there. So he took a straw and stuck it in. And instead of water coming out, blood came out because he stuck it in his eye. So Gurudev said, actually he was already blind because he had an eye facing towards the material world. So, anybody who tries to obstruct the bhakti of his husband or wife or relative or friend it's understood that he's already blind in one eye, and he will become blind in one eye for obstructing. He said, so you should be very careful. You should say to your spouse or relative or child or parent, oh, I'm so happy you're doing this. I bless you. I'll give you all help. Otherwise, you become blind in one eye. Okay, so any questions, final questions, because it's very late. He said, don't put too many rings on the toes because it shouldn't be heebie-jeebie uh, or congested. Make it so that it's nice. But I just wanted to mention that, so for anybody who came late, posters are down the hill, wholesale posters, or retail after the festival you can get from a Bhakti store of Viswambar Prabhu Bhakti Projects. And all the proceeds for all the posters and the G-clays and everything and the original paintings all go for Gurudev's Navadvi Project. And soon you'll be seeing announcements somewhere, whether in Pure Bhakti or somewhere, or in the Harikata mailing list, somewhere, 
about um, the sale of the original drawings for the... Oh, I never even showed you the Goberdun line drawings. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got out. Well, this should be another class. Yeah. Uh -huh. the another class. Another class. <laughs> it is a whole class in and of itself. So let's say yeah, this. Then, huh? I've got ten more minutes of tape. What? I've got ten more minutes of tape. What should we do? Who's in charge here? The offering is still on the altar. Uh, the offering is still on the altar, so you can go on. The offering is still on the altar. It's not stop. Will somebody talk to one of the sannyasis? Another class? It would have to be a replacement. Okay. Okay. I will if somebody lets me. All the slides are All the space. Yeah. All right, then I'll rush through it. Give us some taste now. Okay, we'll resume at uh, 3 or whatever you can do. Sky, are you going? Damarani Didi Ki! Sai! Hilu Guru Dev Ki! Sai! Hilu Prabhupada Ki! Sai! Kaur Pramanande! He's worshipping Paramatma, not you. Um, so this is the, is this supposed to work? This will be good. Hare Krishna. I'll be here on my side. This is um, the second shorter part of this morning's longer part of the um, discussion on how Srila Gurdjieff created so many wonderful um, manifestations of the spiritual world, just as Srila Prabhupada did when he's during his manifesto time. We discussed this morning the... Does anybody know uh, Leslie Garston or Lee Shadassi or Shikhani Gosh or Shadassi or Lee I know the lead to Saki from the last one. No, Here. these are the people that run the Kirtananda Swami Sex place up the street. You got him here. He's, He's here. standing in front of you. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry for the service of emergency. Okay, thank you. So this morning we discussed the Seva Kunj painting, the four Manjari's paintings, Gornatai, Venugit, the Gita Govinda drawings, the Gita Govinda paintings, and lastly, we'll be discussing now the Govardhan paintings, that is, paintings or drawings of Govardhan Lila, which were done for the Giri Dhari Gaudiyamat palatial temple at Govardhan in Vrindavan. It started about two years ago at that Govardhan temple. Gurudev told me that the palace was some, already so much developed, but there was still work to be done. He told me he was planning to have about 30 or so bas reliefs, that is three-dimensional paintings. You um, carve or make stone on the wall and mold it into pictures. And then you paint it and they become three-dimensional pictures on the wall. And they're 
Some of them were five feet by ten feet or fifteen feet. Very, very large. So, unexpectedly, Gurudev called me one day and said that the Bengali sculptor who sculpted and painted the bas reliefs for the Rupsanatan Gaudiyamat and Sri Keshwaji Gaudiyamat in Mathura, that person was uh, going to sculpt Govardhan Lila. Inside, he himself sculpted the same Chaitanya pastimes and Krishna pastimes as he did in Vrindavan and Mathura. And in this temple was added Ramalila. But because they weren't familiar with the um, Gurudev's mood in what Govardhan Lila should look like, he wanted us to do the line drawings and then turn the line drawings over to the sculptors for making three-dimensional. And it was my understanding that they would also do the painting, so we would just provide the references. He said, you have to hurry because we only have a few days before the sculptor is coming. So, we had the previous year, uh, under Pro Gurudev's guidance, and coming out from his heart using myself and about five or six other inexperienced artists as his paintbrushes and pencils, the Gita Govinda drawings had come out to his satisfaction. So uh, with a little more confidence, we began the drawings for Govardhan. He told me to write a list of what I found in the Braj Mandala Parikrama book and then go over it with him. So when I did, he accepted some, he rejected some, and then he added his own for some total of about, from 20 to 25. And then he said he wants series, triplets, and um, in twos. That is, any pastime having three pictures, like in the Christian um, art world, they have three pictures showing the story. So sometimes three, and sometimes two. So then Manjuri, myself, and a few other uh, artists began the drawings. And before we did, well, I showed him the first drawing, just a few days later, of Hanuman carrying Govardhan. Because the first, the beginning of Govardhan Lila is, how did Govardhan end up in Braj from where he was before. So Gurudev didn't like our picture of Hanuman. So he himself posed for Hanuman. He shouldn't be as a standing and flying, but like reclining and with his arms up that way. So a couple of the artists, all these, most of these uh, pictures are done by a um, group of two or three or sometimes even four artists and most totally inexperienced but Gurudev empowered them. I'm hoping that all of you who are very far away would kindly come and sit here and if you need to sit in chairs you're more than welcome to bring your chairs right up here and if the people who don't need chairs could come close leaving a little aisle for Mahaprabhu in the middle, then everything, and if the people can, who are not sitting on chairs can come closer so that the chair people can come closer. Can you? Can you come closer? Good meeting? No, you can stay on this side and then I'll file it here. Okay. Good. So when I was beginning to show him the pictures, as I mentioned this morning when I was first starting the Gita Govinda drawings, and he was uh, 
he's fully conscious of everything. I want to tell one story that happened in Australia so you can get the idea of what goes on when he seems to ignore somebody or act disgusted with somebody or that you're the last person in the world he wants to see as many of us have experienced all those varieties. In Australia in 1997, um, as you know, there's always propaganda from certain institutions that if you go see Narayan Maharaj, you'll go to hell, you'll never be able to come to our temple, and Prabhupada rejects you. So in 1997, that was going on. So people were coming, though, with some reticence. And one husband and wife couple came, and the wife fell in love with Gurudev immediately, and he was giving her attention. And the husband was very, um, very, very hesitant and didn't want to get involved. So he kept giving attention to the wife, and she kept uh, being very open and uh, receptive to Gurudev. And he was standoffish, and Gurudev was giving her attention. Now every day he kept getting more and more interested but Gurudev kept giving attention to the wife. And then he started becoming frustrated that Gurudev is not giving me attention and not talking to me. And by the end of it, he was screaming in his mind, why don't you give me some attention? I want your attention. I'm interested. And when Gurudev just turned to him at the very end and said, I'm working on you. <laughs> so it looked like he was totally ignoring him. <laughs> So when Gurudev seems to not be aware that we're here or that you're the last person in the world he wants to see or he looks at everybody and smiles and you, he just, you don't exist. This is all very intentional because as mentioned this morning, the stirrer of the butter who's making ghee knows exactly what he's doing to make beautiful golden uh, eternal ghee by stirring the butter and all the butter is feeling is that um, I'm suffering and I'm boiling and so many anartas are coming out but it's all coming from the supreme stir so um, when we started showing him the drawings I showed him a drawing that uh, took a very long time to do I, unfortunately I don't have the ink drawing here but those of you who come to Houston we'll, we're going to show slideshows of these drawings, so you can see it there. Um, very elaborate of Don Gatti, Krishna challenging the gopis, that I'm sorry, but I have to tax your yogurt because I'm the owner of this area, Vrindavan and Govardhan, and we always tax people who are bringing their goods. And it's very beautiful, joking pastimes. So I tried to show it to Gurudev, and he, when he was walking out of his room, of his uh, mature temple on the roof to go down to give class and he I put it right in front of me he said I can't understand what these lines are and every time I try to show him it's like no time I have time for everybody else but not you and at the end of class um, those of you who are in uh, Mantra know that sometimes at the end of class after the after the class a kirtan begins and then many devotees walk up to him and they whisper things back and forth. You have to go real close to him because the kirtan is so loud. So I had a very important question about this project that he asked us to do and I went to speak to him and he just went, I can't hear you. <laughs> so that everybody could see that I wasn't wanted to be talked to. So it's a matter of, so should I lose my enthusiasm or should I know that Gurudev uh, wants us to be so close to him like water and wetness or fire and its heat and light that he doesn't want material impediments to get in the way but he wants us to become one in heart with him as he always asks always orders Guru Mukha Padma Vaikya Chitte Te Kodiya Aikya when will my heart be the same as the words and the heart of my Gurudev so whenever he does things like that, it's all for the stirring, and it's all for us to get uh, disgusted with ourselves being so attached to uh, his externals, our externals. When, uh, in 1993, I admitted to Gurudev that I seem to spend half of my day worrying 
that people are judging me, and I spend the second half of my day judging others. So what am I going to do about it? So Gurudev said, I don't have time for all these things. I'm too busy chanting the prayers of Srila Narottam Das Thakur and Srila uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. In other words, that's the process out. Then we won't have time for the mental life. So everything that Gurudev does with us is totally conscious and for that purpose. It came from that realm, maddened in Prem, uh, in Gopi Bhav, and what he came for is to make us maddened also. He taught us the song, Prabhada Madana Leela Kandare Kandare Te Rochetam Navajanor Dandamas Menamandam Itikila Kalanartam Lagna Kastadayor Me Nijinikati Neva Someday Govardhanatam as this is the subject of Govardhan. O oh, Govardhan, you're always in uh, Pramada, always in the highest exalted transcendental ecstasies, maddened and intoxicated by Krishna Prem. Why? Because 24 hours a day, you always have, you always witness the pastimes of Radha and Krishna as they are transpiring and as they are perspiring in your caves and kundas. Nobody laughed. Okay, so. <laughs> So, we're, he's giving us and teaching us, as Prabhupada did and as our Guru Prampara does, give us all these beautiful songs to become like them. Therefore, whatever he does is coming from that place, and whatever he does to us is because he wants us to go to that place and serve him with such intimacy that it's one in heart. In that realm, in the Govardhan in that realm, just like we're having the Govardhan festival tomorrow. Okay, timely. So, in that realm, uh, Krishna and Radha and all their associates uh, have massive book-length conversations just by an exchange of a momentary glance. They know exactly the book-long speech that the other person wants to give. So that's what Gurudev wants us to bring us to. So he makes, just like all those people who wanted to, what did they want to do in the Jewish religion, Isha Prabhu? They wanted to build a skyscraper up to God? So he made them speak all kinds of different languages so that they would fight, so that they would, so that they would fight with each other, not understand each other and become frustrated. Similarly, uh, our acharyas simultaneously want to give us the taste of that realm and show us the frustration of this realm. So whenever he does that, it's fully conscious. In fact, in um, Holland in 1996, his first world tour, he said, why are you going to astrologers? I can simply look at your forehead and tell you, tell you 10,000 lives, past and future. If a Vaishnava doesn't know every single thing that's going on in your mind, he's not a Vaishnava. So... Don't think I'm not always with you. I'm always with you, and I always know everything about you. And he wants us not to engage him in our world. He wants to engage us in his world. So then, uh, after a couple of weeks of that, uh, we kept going, and engaged, uh, more artists came forward and helped with about 15 or 20 sketches. Then we brought those sketches to Gurudev, and... We were there with him and also the sculptor. And when he saw those, all the sketches of the pastimes, he was so pleased. And he said, I have cheated you for this purpose. When he says cheated, he sometimes means tricked. I've tricked you means I've you know, done the stirring for this purpose, to bring out uh, the drawings. And then he was commenting what he likes, what he wanted changed. So... Uh, now I'll show you the drawings as they came out and what the leelas are behind them. Can you hold it up? Yeah. This okay, Mahaprabhu? Okay. This is uh, how Govardhan first came to Braj. There's two stories that's told in the Vedic literatures that happen in different yugas, different creations. 
One is, Hanuman was helping Lord Ram to construct a bridge across the Indian Ocean to Lanka. And everybody had to carry mountains to help create the bridge. So Hanuman found the mountain of Govardhan and he was carrying him to the ocean. When all of a sudden there was an aerial voice which said, now Ram has already the amount of mountains and rocks he needs. Now you can just leave everything where it is. So Hanuman put Govardhan down and it just so happened that it was Brudge where he put him. He was flying over Brudge. So knowing that Govardhan would be very unhappy to not be engaged in Lord Ram's service, Hanuman went to Ram, and Ram said that he should be blessed that when I am Krishna in Braj, he will play on my very breast and perform, I'll perform, I'm sorry, I will play on his very breast and perform all kinds of pastimes there. So here in this picture, you see Hanuman uh, blessing, giving benedictions to Govardhan that Krishna will surely come and play on you, and Govardhan was very pleased. And you can see, just as there are faces on uh, Shalagram Shilas, so if you look carefully, there's a face here, and Govardhan is very pleased. And the sculptor also sculpted in that face. You can see that when you're, when you're in Govardhan. Another history is Pulatsi Rishi wanted to perform bhajan in Kasi. And he went to Dronal, Dron, Dronachala, Dronachala, who is the father of uh, Govardhan, and asked for his son to carry to Kasi because there, there wasn't so much beautiful, lush forests and flowers and fruits, and Govardhan was full of such uh, opulence. So Govardhan agreed to come. He said, as long as you don't put me down, I agree to be carried by you. Wherever you put me down, there I stay. So it just so happened that when he was walking over Brudge, he had such mystic powers that he was very easily able to carry him. But when he was walking through Brudge, he had a call of nature, and so he had to put Govardhan down for a moment and uh, become clean, come back, and this time he couldn't lift Govardhan at all. So he became so angry, Govardhan said, I kept my word. He became so angry that he said, I curse you then, that every day you will become less and less in size by a mustard seed. So Govardhan didn't mind taking the curse. He was just happy to be in the land where he would become the playground of Radha and Krishna. So, here... He? I'm sorry? He, he or she, depending on your Radha card. <coughs> um, um, the relief work did not do all the detail. It did the major things. And then by painting on whatever flat surface remained, all the detail would be there. So here, Palestri Rishi is cursing Govardhan. And you, again, you can see the face of Govardhan in the trees and leaves and spaces. So now Gurudev explained that it's true that Govardhan is decreasing by one mustard seed size daily but not because of the curse, but because of his feelings of separation from Krishna and his associates. Now, inside the temple, the Bengali sculptors did a traditional uh, Krishna lifting over down hill. So why did Gurudev have us do another one on the outside of the temple? Because this one is in his mood, and with his specific details. This shows all the rasas. That is, here's Krishna lifting the hill, but his mind is on Srimati Radhika, 
And that is why he arranged for the lifting of Govardhan Hill and Indra's becoming angry and sending down all the rain, which was as sharp as arrows and as thick as pillars. And the water became so deep that you could not distinguish between a high land and a low land. So everyone went and prayed to Krishna and he lifted Govardhan Hill. But his inner motive, as is the inner motive of all of his activities, not only in Vrindavan but outside as well, is to um, fulfill his desires to please the gopis and particularly Radhika and to fulfill his desires to associate with them. So here's Radhika and Krishna absorbed in each other and as you notice, if you'd come close, or you can see on the wall paintings, if you come for Kartik, Krishna's flute is dropping from his hands, and his chatter, Pitambara, is also dropping from his shoulders, and he's losing his balance, because he's getting the glance of Shrimati Radhika. So, You'll notice that just behind him is Madhu Mangal, uh, Lord Krishna's funny Brahmana friend, here. Oops. And Madhu Mangal is leaning over and pinching Krishna on his side and saying, this is no time to faint. What will happen if you're fainting now and you're supposed to lift the Govardhan Hill? So he brought Krishna back to alertness. And Mother Yasoda and the um, Nanda Baba, there in Vatsalya Bhav, in full anxiety that the mountain shouldn't hurt Krishna, their son, who's an ordinary boy. Then the gopi is, you see, she's looking up because she's threatening to curse Govardhan that if you fall even one drop onto Krishna and hurt him in any way, then by my glance, I curse you to become like powder. And the coward boys are thinking, Krishna may be having a hard time, so we should help him by holding up Govardhan with our sticks. And the coward men are thinking, Krishna is not lifting the hill. Lord Narayan is lifting the hill because he's pleased with Nanda Baba's austerities. So in this way, this is Govardhan in Gurudev's mood. Then there's a triptych. Then there's a triptych. Is this okay for you, Mahaprabhu? Okay, we'll keep it here. Okay, can, can everybody see this? Or anybody can switch seats if you want. So this is one of the triptychs that Srila Gurudev requested. First is Jalkeli Lila, Radha and Krishna and the gopis splashing in Radha Kund. And sometimes they defeat Krishna and sometimes Krishna defeats them. But usually Krishna defeats them. So after that, they tell him that that was a game of brute force. And that's why you can win, because you have... You're so strong because you're just a cowherder. But now let's engage in some other games which require intelligence, like dice and other things, word games. And then certainly the gopis win. <laughs> then, this is the second of that triptych. After Radha and Krishna and the gopis come out from the water, the uh, sakis and manjuris engage in drying them. Here you see their clothing is on the line. And all of these pencil sketches were shown to Gurudev for his approval or something changed. And so they're dressing and drying Radha and Krishna. And the manjuris are coming out of the water and helping to dry and dress Radha and Krishna and the gopis. These pastimes are described in Govindali Lamrita and Krishna Bhaganamrita. 
This is the third in the triptych where Radharani and her sakis decorate Krishna with ornaments and uh, unguent designs of, of floral designs and other designs on his body. And Radharani makes a crown, very beautiful crown of flowers. You can imagine how beautiful that crown will be if it's made by her personal hand. And others are putting on ankle bells. And these, one other devotee, a new disciple from Gurudev, in, um, who lives in Govardhan, who was born in Govardhan, did the background. We gave just a very quick pencil sketch, and then he did the elaborate ink drawing. And then another devotee, also inexperienced in this realm, but empowered by Gurudev, a, a lady from Russia, she put on the uh, elaborate um, design work and jari on the gopis. What is a triptych? Three means three. So you have a story in three parts. And so there were three drawings. Then this, uh, Gurudev always laughs when he tells this story, and he laughed when he saw the drawings. Uh, Radharani went to pick flowers at Kushama Sarovara. Kushama means flowers, and Sarovara means lake. So by that lake, Radharani went to pick flowers, and Krishna, knowing in advance that she was coming, by so many means, by uh, messages sent, as we mentioned this morning, by handmade ink of pressing flowers, making their own ink, and writing on lotus petals. Somehow Krishna got the message that Radharani was going there. So he thought he would play a trick, and that is, he sat on the branch, knowing that she would pick flowers from that branch. And so the branch was weighted down. When she was in the middle of picking a bunch of flowers, Krishna jumped off the branch. And so there was no more weight on the branch. And so the branch flew up, and Krishna jumped down, and Radharani was hanging on to the bunch of flowers, and she flew up, and she was crying out for help. Unfortunately, I don't have the third line drawing here. We'll show it in Houston. And the third one is when uh, Krishna catches Radharani, and she's pushing him away, saying, I don't want to be caught by you, and he's laughing, and all the gopis are clapping. Then this is another Kushama Sarovara pastime where Radharani is picking flowers and Krishna comes along and says, Who are you who's stealing the flowers of my Vrindavan? So Radharani says, What do you mean, who am I? You don't know who I am? And Krishna said, If I knew who you were, would I be asking you who you are? Just as young boys and girls look for any excuse to speak about anything. Sweet nothings, as they say. So where does this come from? As Gurudev said the other night, Janmad Yasi Yataha. Everything has its origin in the absolute truth. But here, all pastimes are full of misery, ignorance, and temporality. There, everything is full of bliss, knowledge, and eternity. So then they have a lover's quarrel, loving quarrel, Prem Kalaha as to who Vrindavan belongs to. And this is actually just an excuse for Krishna to glorify Radharani. Because he was telling the gopis that Radharani always steals the beauty of my forest. In fact, her whole existence is a thievery of the beauty of my forest. Now, my beautiful banduka uh, fruits, red, beautiful banduka fruits, sweet, succulent, now looks pale in comparison to her lips because she's stolen the beauty of that fruit. And the lotus flowers all look dim because she's stolen the beauty of her lotus flower, my lotus flowers, and put them on her eyes. So in this way, in various ways, he's glorifying Srimati Radhika.
Then, uh, not a triptych now coming up, but a two-part pastime. This is Lokar Lila, where Krishna disguises himself as a boatman in other garments, and it's evening time. Once I told Gurudev uh, about ten years ago that my chanting is so dry, it's just like boring, I just chant just to have it get done. So then he said, you should start thinking of these pastimes, like no Lila, while you're chanting. So uh, the boatman says to the gopis, I see you need to take your goods across the river so you can just come on my boat. Of course the boat is very old, but I'll do the best I can. So there's no other boat in sight. So the gopis get on his boat, and then in the middle of Manasi Ganga, Manasi Ganga is made by the Manasi, the mind of Krishna. He collected all the waters from all the holy places and brought them to Vrindavan to satisfy his parents who wanted to take bath in all the holy places. So in the middle of the river, all of a sudden Krishna says he starts putting his weight side to side on the boat and making the boat rock. And he said, your um, containers of yogurt are too heavy. Our boat will sink. You have to throw them overboard. So well, we have to start. We have to start kirtan. Okay, so I'm just going to zip through everything. This is kirtan. <laughs> okay, so we'll zip through everything in the next five minutes. And we'll continue in Houston with slideshows and everything big. Because Gurudev will be very displeased if he doesn't see a real live singing kirtan. So here in the boat, you can see the um, yogurt pots are being thrown off. And then he said, your ornaments are too heavy. We're going to sink. You have to take them off. And the whole purpose that Krishna arranged this boat Leela was to get Radharani to be afraid so that she would hold on to him for dear life. And when Gurudev saw that, he was laughing. This, this now is a bas relief of about 15 feet um, in the back corridor of the Govardhan temple. The devotees who were running the guest house uh, of the Govardhan temple were suggested by somebody to do elaborate um, advertising, big, big posters and ads in hotels to advertise our Govardhan temple. So Gur Gurudev said, no need for spending so much money or any money on advertising. The two ad big advertising factors which are going to make people throng to the temple is the wall paintings and the beauty of the deities. They're just so gorgeous, these deities. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the first picture, but the first one is Don Gatti, which I told you about, which Gurudev pretended he didn't want to see. And this is uh, Dani Vartan Kund, where... One second. Thanks. Um, Dani Vartan Kund, where the gopis retaliate and um, they wait for a time when Krishna is only with a few friends, then thousands of gopis box the ear of the friends and um, force Krishna to be dressed, but the badger girls do it every year, force Krishna to be dressed in gopi dress and then tie, hold his hands behind his back, put a yoga pot on his head, throw the uh, rock at the pot and then all the yogurt falls on Krishna's head and everybody cra claps and laughs. What happens next is that Krishna, full of dripping yogurt, falls at the feet of Srimati Radhika and Gurudev said, yes, Kalyana Bhavatu. Kalyana Bhavatu. Mangala Bhavatu. All blessings to you. I forgive you and now that you've surrendered. Krishna is surrendering to the Queen of Vrindavan. And this is uh, modern Anukut with um, uh, Madhavendra Puripat worshipping Giriraj Govardhan who he found who came to him in a dream and asked him to install him on the mountain and here is Sri Sanatana Goswami who at a very old age was circumambulating the mountain and then Giridhari himself came and said no need to continue I'm taking this rock I'm making my footprint in it and you can just circumambulate this rock four times so uh, there are a few others that we don't have here. But in, uh, at 
in Houston will have also a big slideshow of the uh, wall paintings as they're developing, the actual ones. Okay, so we'll end here because there's now Kirtan, yes? Yeah, on Sunday, there's the whole day. Too. Okay, we'll see what happens then on Saturday and Sunday. Go Premanandi, Hare Hare Ho. Parani Didi Ki. Oh yes, uh, we're going to be making photocopies of the drawings and then they'll just be available down at the bottom of the hill starting in a couple of days. And, a photo and photocopies, we hope that somebody will come forward to make Xeroxes. Of the, anyone can come forward to make Xeroxes of the descriptions and Xeroxes of the drawings.